Hello everyone. Good morning and welcome to the live launch of Worcester Life Stories. As you can see, we are appropriately socially distancing. Um, and we've had our first tech issue where I need to turn my laptop off. And you also need to get into shots. <laughs> <laughs> um, I hope everyone can see me and it's just, mm, let's... That way, I think. That way. Bit further. Bit further. Can... Oh, the joys. Can we turn that camera? Uh, I have uh, there we go, there, there we, we go. go. <laughs> we are now live, and sorry for that tech issue, it just goes to show, doesn't it? Um, I'm Tash Lord, I'm a clinical psychologist for Worcestershire Health and Care Trust. And I'm Sheena Payne Lunn, I'm Historic Environment Record Officer for Worcester City Council. Um, and it's really great that we can be doing this with you. I know it, it may be a little hard to see me. Sheena wanted me to say that she's not intentionally hogging the camera, she didn't put the makeup on, and I didn't because I'm at the back. But just sorry, she couldn't, couldn't help myself. But um, I, I guess for us, one of the things that we were thinking about is we're, we're going to tell you about our project. And we had hoped that we would be holding a, a big event in the Guild Hall where we could all come together and we could share this. As we know, coronavirus is, is stopping that and we're needing the technology to, to, to bring it to you. But actually, one of the things that we said is maybe this project is even more relevant now, more relevant as a chance to come together and sort of share and connect about something that's meaningful. Um, and because of that, we've been thinking about how we can do this. So please bear with us. We've already started with tech issues. We may have a few more, but um, yeah, it'd be really great to have you here with us. This, Ah, uh, there we go. That's my laptop going again where you can't you can't do the two. So in terms of the programme, Sheena and I are going to do a little bit of an overview about Worcester Live Stories project, um, kind of what it looks like, how you can get involved. We're then going to have Kathy, who's a vintage singer, is going to give us some songs from the 1940s. We then thought we'd stop, have a bit of tea and cake, and obviously that's my favourite bit. Um, and a big shout out to Latin McCourt and Perry Manor Care Home who are joining us today. It's a shame we can't, we can't see you wave back, but we really hope you're enjoying your, your afternoon tea and that you've got the bunting up and we can't wait to see the photos. One o'clock, we're coming back. We're just going to, to go over the, the project again, give everyone a chance to be able to hear it. More singing, so Ace is going to come and give us some hits from the 50s and 60s. Then we've got a live quiz. Now, don't worry. Cheating can go on, I've already heard that it's happening, but it's an opportunity to come together, share your knowledge, learn about Worcester, um, and really just come together and have some fun. And then we're gonna come back and, and then talk about closing and what next. So we really want this to be interactive and a chance for people to say, what do you think? Have you got any questions? share your memories it'd be really great to hear some of the things that are already happening we've got our hashtag there share your story so if you put that in we've got sheena at the front who's holding the tech i'm going to be on facebook and twitter and what we can do is we'll look at that over the course of the next few hours <laughs> so um don't laugh she <laughs> i've been told we haven't changed a bit please don't comment this is actually a photo of us in our early 20s yeah 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 Okay. Last year, in fact. Last year, last year. Um, but I guess for me, what what I was thinking about when um, when when starting this project um, and and sharing with you today is actually starting with a story. So go back five years. Obviously, we didn't look any different. Um, I worked as a clinical psychologist on an inpatient ward, and I was really reminded when I was in the Black Country how we used to have somebody come and he would bring photos of Wolverhampton and it was a chance for people to come together, um, share their knowledge, hear other things and you could, the, the sense of connection and well-being and, and the difference that it was making and a, and a chance just to come together. And when I thought about it, I thought, I don't think we've got anything like that in Worcester. So as people typically do, phone a friend who you hope can do it for free, which is what, what Sheena, 
uh, did, um, and I'll go on to talk about that. And you got really excited, didn't you? I think I was saying that I wanted somebody to come and, and tell us, you know, about photos of Worcester and what we could do. And I remember you telling me that you have this collection of 35,000 images that you've been thinking, how do I connect with the, the public with this? How do I get this out in a meaningful way? And you'd started, I think, at that point, to hear of Know Your Place Bristol, is that right? I'm trying to think yeah. Right. yeah. And uh, as, as Sheena was telling me that story, I was thinking um, how brilliant it would be if we've got this resource that for older people, people living with dementia, anybody really, that you'd be able to pull this resource into your own life story. And I think I remember saying to you that that would just be wonderful. And how could we do that and maybe have movies? And, and we got so excited, didn't we? Um, we did. <laughs> <laughs> Me, maybe more so. Um, and where that went was... Um, sorry everyone, was we started to talk to other people. So um, Paul, I hope you're watching, Paul Edwards, he's at Platform Housing. We started to, to talk to um, other colleagues of ours, Kim Terry at uh, Worcestershire Association of Carers, and, and a number of other people, as you can see on there. And we started saying, look, we've, we've got this idea for a project, what do you think? And everybody started coming back with a resounding, yes, this sounds like a really good idea. I want to be involved. Have you heard of this? Do you know of this person? Do you, uh, have you joined this group? And what we found was more and more people introduced other people in terms of what would be really helpful, wasn't it? And I think at one point, I remember Sheena and I were saying that the project got so big, we couldn't necessarily see it coming off. Um, and then it started to funnel down again. And I think the enthusiasm, and in fact, I just wanted to share a, a story. And, and Jodie, I don't know if you're wrong, but I was speaking to our medical secretary just a couple of days ago in terms of um, the, the launch. And she said to me, do, do you know, Tash? She said, uh, my dad used to work at the chemist on the, the high street when he was a kid. So the, I think he was about 13 or 14. And so we won't go into sort of what age you know, for starting work, um, and that he used to be there. And when the chemist closed down, she said, he, he told us how he went into the basement and collected up all the old jars so that he could, um, so that they could be remembered and people could look at them. And I think that was the thing that we were really noticing, weren't we, Sheena? I remember Paul saying that, you know, you have a number of people that have so many stories or the kind of history of a place that potentially gets lost and we don't capture it anywhere and how can we do that and we'll go on to talk about what that will look like but I think that that sort of how do we keep this oral history um, going in a way of sort of capturing it so I think that sort of enthusiasm and I don't think I've met one person who hasn't had a story to tell or, or knows of a story to tell really mm. um, so, so for a few of you, you may have actually attended our event. This was in 2017, and um, actually it was, it was really amazing to, to go. Sheena had uh, blown up photos of Worcester from 1951, and we hung them on a, on a washing line, so it went the, the length of the Guild Hall, which is quite different really to how it is today. It was our sort of low-tech sort of... Um... Time travel, wasn't it? <laughs> it was the, uh, the the blueprint for for where we're going. Mm. Maybe, mm. yeah. But anyway, I think there was a there was that recognition that so we we blew up, um, or I should say you did. You're the one with the photos. Uh, Worcester High Street in 1951, and it was incredible, really. I think we we. Um, we'd had somebody sort of counting the numbers and over 1,500 people had attended. Um, and I think the buzz around, the, the number of people that wanted to say, I've got this memory, or did you know this, or could we do this, that we knew that this was something that people wanted to take forward, mm -hmm. that this is something that would really make a difference to people um, on a number of different levels. So there was just something about, okay, what next? Um, and this is the hard part. So, as always, with a brilliant idea, 
which it is. It is. <laughs> is how to get the money. Um, and this is a really sort of ambitious project and we are so pleased that with our stakeholders who have offered their time and their services for free, um, and I think that needs to be recognised, the number of volunteers that are also offering their time um, yeah. for free. We then looked at what things we needed to fund. And some of those were, so so for me, from the, the uh, Health and Care Trust, we, we did a, a presentation to our, um, our global digital exemplar team, which is somebody that uh, was moving uh, is how you move NHS technology forward um, and they agreed it was a really good idea and the the trust have agreed to fund um, the Worcester Life Stories platform which I'm going to go on to talk about and also the project time and some support around that. Um, Sheena as part of Worcester City Council applied to Heritage Lottery Fund as, as we've got there, um, and we had funding of almost 80,000 to um, develop the Know Your Place, which you're going to talk about in a minute, um, and also your time. Worcester City Council, just, just recognising all the different places where people have come together, um, as well as the platform that we've got set up, we are also holding a number of events over the next couple of years, aren't we? So there's going to be a museum exhibition, uh, next year, a 3D time travel that I cannot wait to see, Sheen. Um, Very exciting. <laughs> and, and also, just in recognition of the people that are coming together and thinking about the different mediums and, and what's really important is that over the course of our, our workshops and our time, we are going to ask people whether they'd be willing to share sort of old people, people living with dementia, their memories that we can pull together into a book. Yeah. a sort of coffee style book so there's just a number of things that are going to be happening um, and as well as that I think one of the things that was really important to you and I was we, we spoke about that actually the historic environment record with the collection of photos of Worcester is something that actually there's another there, there are a number of um, HERs as they're known sort of nationally where this project is could be replicated and for me, in terms of that interaction between Know Your Place, and we'll go on to talk about this, and the Worcester Life Stories platform, how councils and trusts can come together to replicate it. And as part of that, Historic England uh, agreed to fund the Association of Dementia Studies, looking at what impact does um, where we live, um, how we associate with our home, that sense of connecting, belonging, our, our sense of identity and who we are, and how that affects our well-being. So they're going to be working alongside us as partners to look at that with the idea that that will then help promote other services being able to take this forward. So this is, I'm aware it might feel a slightly um, overarching screen in terms of the amount of information in there. So you'll have the top platform, Know Your Place, which Sheena's just going to break down and talk in a little more detail that will be owned by Worcester City Council. And then the platform below that you can see that says uh, Worcester Life Stories platform, I'll then go on to explain in a bit more detail and, and, and how you can get involved, because that's really what we want from today. Yeah. Okay, thanks Tash. Um, so I'm gonna talk a little bit about um, Know Your Place Worcester. Um, so we're really excited to have the funding to be able to take this forward. Um, Obviously, um, we have all these amazing photographs. As I said, there are around 35,000, or as Tash said, there's around 35,000 historic photographs that form um, part of the Worcester City Historic Environment Record. And the Historic Environment Record, which is a bit of a mouthful, so I'll just call it the HER from now on. Um, this um, is a, a database of all the known archeological sites um, historic buildings and monuments within the city of Worcester. So it's a, a huge resource of, of information. And attached to that are these amazing photographs that we um, 
have collected over the years uh, within the um, the city council um, the photos that have been taken by conservation officers, by planning officers, by people going about their sort of day to day business within within the council. But as you'll have seen from some of the material that we've already put out there through via the quizzes, um, by by the um, event at the Guild Hall. Um, you know, it's an amazing, rich resource, and and we really, you know, we've we've had this here at, at um, on our on our servers, sitting waiting for us to do something with them. Really, um, so this is our opportunity to get them online for the first time, and it's a really, really exciting opportunity for us. I'm really pleased about it. Um, one of the things that we really wanted to ensure is that those those images are search searchable obviously with that number of, of images it's it's probably quite tricky to know where to start with them so the first thing that we wanted to do was make sure that they're geographically searchable so for instance many of you will be familiar with um, google maps uh, so you can zoom into the street where you grew up click on a point on the map and that will bring up the images of, of the um of, of that area at that at, at um a point in history. Um, so being able to search for them geographically was important for us. Um, the second thing that we wanted to be able to do was uh, search them thematically. Um, and this really feeds into um, where we'll be going with the second platform, which Tash, Tash is going to talk about. So the ability to be able to search for uh, a particular car that you had growing up, you might have had I don't know, an Austin Maxi, I think a few people have been talking about via Facebook recently. Um, perhaps the school that you went to, um, I don't know, perhaps um, your corner shop, all of these things that make up the memories of, you, of your, your childhood and, and your, um, you know, growing up and your previous years. Um, we wanted to make those, those easy to find. Um, so we, we were looking around and as, as Tash was saying, I was already aware of a platform called Know Your Place, which um, is something that was developed by Bristol City Council. Uh, so I'm just going to bring that image up now. That's a, um, a screen image from the Know Your Place Bristol website. Um, and that really does all the things that we were hoping to be able to do with this collection. So you've got a, a modern map there. You've also got, there's a little slider sort of partway down the the map um, and you've got your historic map so you can overlay a historic map onto the modern map if I just go back up to the previous slide you can see there on the right hand side that's a, an extract from um, the first edition ordnance survey map from 1885 uh, and you can just see the sort of level of detail that you get in those maps so being able to make those accessible is really important for us as well um, and this is a platform that allows us to do that. So we can overlay all of those historic um, maps and then we can start populating that with the photographs. So um, you can see just down the right hand side of the, um, the screen there, there's a list of different resources. Um, and if you tick onto one of those, it uh, brings up that particular resource on the map. So if I go to the next slide, I've just clicked on one of those points on the map there, and you can see a little a little screen that's come up in the middle um, that shows a little thumbnail image of a photograph. Um, that's one of the photographs that's been added to the map. So if I then go, if I click on that photograph, you can then see it in in full detail, and it's you can see the quality of that. There's uh, some real detail in there. Um, so this is really what we want to do with our with our collection is be able to make those those photos uh, visible across the city. Um, just going back to the the map there, if you then click on the the further information on the the little window, you won't be able to read that, but it will also give you a bit of background information about that image. So that might tell you the dates, where it was what it's showing, uh, perhaps if there are any people in the image, it might it might talk about them, it might identify a particular event. So it just give you that sort of richness of information and potentially uh, people's memories attached to that as well. Um, the third element of, the, of that platform that we really wanted to be able to facilitate 
was not just making our data available, but we also want to make sure that um, local people are able to share their knowledge. Obviously, if you've lived in a place for, for any length of time, you become a bit of an expert in your own place and your own streets. You know, you you have things to share about that. You have memories. Um, and we wanted to be able to make it easy for local people to be able to feed that back to us. We've seen such a wealth of, of um, information and stories being shared across things like Facebook and Twitter and, and various other things. Whenever we run an event, people come and talk to us about um, what they know of the place. And, and you know, it can, can be all sorts of things, as Tash has already talked about. Um, so we really wanted to make that possible. Uh, you can see on the right hand side there, there's a couple of images that um, a lady shared with us recently when we undertook the, um, the Cripplegate Park um, Russell Pipe Kiln excavation. Um, and she actually grew up in the area of, of the park um, in Russell Terrace, which originally crossed into part of, of the, the park. Uh, so these were images that she had of her childhood living there. And it really just makes that story, uh, it just gives it that much more richness, really. So being able to share those more widely is, is a real aim for us in this project. Uh, and that's something that we can do via Know Your Place. So um, we will be, um, over the course of the project, offering um, events where you come, come and have a look and see how it's going to work. Uh, and actually be able to upload your own images, but also your own memories as well. So uh, oral histories, we might um, perhaps ask people if they want to record their own memories and, and upload an audio file, or if they just wanted to write um, some, some details or just share a photograph or whatever the, the information is, um, it would just be great to be able to put that on a platform where everyone can share and enjoy it. Um, so that's going to be really exciting over, over the next few months and we should be able to facilitate that fairly quickly in, in the project. Um, it will also obviously be uh, a platform for us to share more heritage data resources um, into the future. So um, initially we'll be putting our historic photographs and maps on from the HER, but potentially that could be archaeological information, um, it could be all sorts of, of material that uh, we have sitting there uh, just waiting to go online. So there's a lot of potential for this site. And the most important thing, of course, is that this information uh, continues to be free and unrestricted for the community to use. So it will be. Um, all of that information will be there. You can uh, log on to it. You can um, have a look at it anytime you like. Um, and you can feel free to share that with your friends and family. Um, so, just as a few milestones uh, for the project, it's mm -hmm. it's kicking off pretty rapidly. Um, our first um, bit of development work on Know Your Place Worcester will start next month in July. So we've been talking to um, Pete and Paul, Pete and in Saul and Paul, Paul. Oh, Horton. Sorry, Paul. <laughs> um, at, at Bristol City Council, and they're actually um, doing the work to um, develop um, Know Your Place Worcester um, with us. Um, one of the things that we will be asking members of the public to do, uh, so look out for, for uh, various communications from us over the next few months, um, we'll actually be asking you to come along to some workshops because what we want to make sure is that the language that we use on that on the website um, makes sense to you as the users and that you're feeding into that, that process so that it's intuitive and you can find your way around without any, any problems. So those will be happening during July and August. Um, and then moving into the autumn, during November, we will um, be soft launching the website for beta testing. So any snags that we've, we've got in, in the development work can be picked up then. Uh, anything that's not working properly, we can get people to feed back to us. Um, and then with a good wind in December, Know Your Place Worcester will be launched formally online. So all that material will be going live um, and it will be available at that point for people to share all of their amazing memories and knowledge and photographs of Worcester. Exciting times.
It is, Shane. And um, I, I think the thing for me is every time that you say that, and, I, and I've heard you, you talk about it a number of times, is it's just so exciting, isn't it? It's going to make it so that that being able to not only access what you have, but people being able to upload their own memories and photographs and have that as an ever-growing resource will mm. really make a difference to people. And I think it just fills in those those gaps that, you know, obviously the, the images that we do have, there are an awful lot of them. It's a, an incredible, rich resource. But actually those those kind of personal elements yeah. and, you know, the, the photo of, of um, you know, of the kids playing in the playground and, um, I don't know, having a, a picnic and, you know, all, all of that yeah. personal stuff. Um, it's just lovely to see all of that. So, yeah. Yeah, and I think that feeds really nicely into what we're going to talk about for the Worcester Live Stories platform. So that's, we're at a very different stage. And I guess one of the things that we were looking at following on from what, Sheena is saying is that we are planning to it will have two main functions so the first is going to be able that you can build your own Worcester life story that you're able to personalize that and then going right back to the beginning of the story the reason for bringing Sheena in the first place is about being able to develop those life packs um, but I want to pull on the bit that you were saying in terms of supporting people to get online I know a number of people have said to me actually sometimes um, it can be difficult. Some websites aren't very intuitive and um, it, it's off-putting. I know I, I find it myself sometimes. You yeah. look and it's just, it's too much. And one of the things that we want to do is work together with people to say, what should that look like? And I'll carry on with, with that in a moment. But also once the, the platform is live, we're going to have support and help available for people that say, do you know what, I really want to access this, but I'm a bit worried about it. So people um, within Worcestershire Association of Carers and Platform Housing have offered their digital champions to help support people to be able to get on online. So we'll, we'll carry on to talk about this, but it's something that we've really held in mind. So just thinking about the, the two elements. Next slide, sorry. Yep. <laughs> Worcester Life Pack. So, um, we haven't agreed what those would look like. Like Sheena just said for Know Your Place, we're going to um, hold a series of workshops asking people in terms of the content, what are the themes that come up that you say, um, whether you're an individual and you're just like, actually, do you know what? I want to know about the place I lived. I want to know about Batten Hall. If you are um, a family and you want to know a bit more and I noticed that on Worcestershire Memories about how people share things that you can come together. For me just thinking about in, in terms of the place where I work one of the reasons I asked Sheena was that opportunity to come together and um, Sheena uh, very kindly came and did a presentation when I was on Athlon Ward to the people there where you where you told us about the history of Bronxwood Hospital and how it used to be an isolation hospital for uh, T I I knew I wouldn't be able to say it, TB and... Mm, uh, at Newtown, yes. Yeah, mm. um, sorry. And, but just that thing in terms of, you, you gave a, the, the history of it. And with, with Sheena correcting me, it's kind of one of those things that um, was really important actually, because sometimes my knowledge is nowhere you know near yours, it's phenomenal. And being able to have a pack where people can have some photos and some facts about a place and a memory that can bring people together that trigger other things is something and a number of people have said to me, do you know what, that would be really useful. I've wondered if this is true, but actually someone said this. So having that to be available is, is going to be, so we're going to be doing that with you. So we may find that there are a number of things coming up or that they're already out there, but we just didn't know about it. And then we can link people into, you know, there's some fantastic projects that I've now heard about in Worcestershire that I didn't know about that we can kind of say, actually, this is happening, like the, the gloving project or a number of other different things, where it'd be just great to, to bring that in. Mm. Um, and then it brings me on to, to our personalised stories. So one of the things that I found so exciting about the project going forward is that we want to work with people in terms of okay what what would that look like 
what would you want to have in there? The, the photograph that you can see is actually one that I took um, uh, quite recently, in fact. And I was thinking, actually, if I was doing my own personalised story, then I'd want to, see, you know, for me, it's a, a place that I'd go to to relax and, and sort of connect. So for me, it's always walking down by the river, and it doesn't matter what time. There's just something about the light and the... And, um, I just find it a really special place for me. So that would be something I'd want in my, my own life story. Um, so, and Sheena, you've already mentioned about schools and you and I were having a conversation just that um, I went to Elgar High School here. Of course, we know that no longer exists. So um, what will happen in terms of the, the, the two platforms interacting is if I don't have that many photos when I'm developing uh, a life story, you will be able to link in to know your place, look for something either, as you say, by theme or geographically by street, be able to pull that then into your own life story, as well as there may be things that you think, do you know what, this is really personal to me. Um, I don't want to, to share that with the public, but I want a space to keep it. So the life story element will be something that will be closed, it will be private, it will be for you, and it will be something that you can decide um, who you want to share it with. So that may be something that you share for enjoyment. Sometimes we know people uh, share it so it helps in terms of communication. There can be a number of different ways. Um, and following on from that, historically when they've looked at life stories, they've been... Um, uh, written bits of information, but there's new evidence coming out to say that actually having ones that are digitally, so like a movie, is even more powerful for people. And we're going to be working with the developer looking at how we can put that together. Um, and similar to what Sheena was saying, that you may have an audio file, so if you're the person that's doing it, you may say, this was me growing up, you know, uh, in the park at, you know, Gullivelt Park at this age or someone may do it for you but what came to mind for me was um you know this this was the place that where we caught it um you know all the things that kind of make up you so the the project will be in in two forms one will be about working together to say okay what will that look like how can we make it accessible um the the sort of the the content and the look and then it's going to go on to the actual personalized Bit. So in terms of getting involved, similar to Sheena, we won't be coming with something that's already formed. We would like to work together to think, okay, this is an idea. Um, I've joked about it being brilliant, but we do, we do think that. But actually, what do you think? What would that look like? How can we bring that together? And what we'll be doing is working over a series of workshops over the six to nine months to sort of bring that together. And each workshop will build on the last one. So there'll be an opportunity to take that idea, then sort of see it as a concept through to something that we can then, similar to you, test out, um, see if it works, and then kind of it's that iterative process. Um, I know, though, that it's not always easy to attend a workshop. At the moment, we're really thinking about sort of virtually and how we can do this and different ways that we can do that. We have set up a, a life stories um, web address, uh, sorry, email, so that if you've got ideas, and you may have ideas already where you're thinking, do you know what, that's brilliant, but I haven't heard Natasha speak about this, we'll continue to kind of um, promote that so you can send those ideas through. So, Sheen, you're right, we, um, we start next month, the first workshop will be coming and we'll be sending out that information for you. Um, and then we hope to go live, similar to you, in spring yeah. next year. Right, okay. So, hopefully we've whetted your appetite for some of the material that, that we hold as part of the, um, the collection. Uh, so I'm just going to bring up now, um, if I can get the tech to work for me, um, there we go. I'm just going to bring up a few slides so that we can just, just have a look at those and enjoy some of the, the material that we hold within the collection um, and give you an idea, if you, you haven't seen any of it already, um, of what it is. Um, hello to uh, Perry Manor and Latimer Court. 
Um, hopefully you've got your, your own um, paper copies of some of these images as well. Uh, there are a few extra ones in there, so I hope that you'll be able to see those on your screens. Um, we had a few requests for some extras, so uh, there's just a, a, a handful of images just to, to give you an idea and to, to get those memories going. Uh, so this first one is uh, from the Shambles in 1951, and I share this one a lot because it's just so evocative of that era with the, um, the horse and cart um, making deliveries, um, presumably to some of the um, the butcher shops along the, the street, but um, not quite sure where, where they were going. Uh, and just the fact that you've got those two little girls um, petting the horse in the front there. Always love that image. Oh, and me. And, <laughs> and Sheen, just to say, I'll, as, as we said earlier, I'm going to be looking at Facebook and Twitter and the YouTube. So anyone who's posting things, I'll, uh, I'll say as we kind of go along. Yes, please do. Any memories that you have or any questions that you have throughout the day, do just post those um, via, via the, the social media channels. It would be really great to hear from you. And yeah, we'll try and um, answer those, any questions or, or um, talk about those as we go. Um, so oh, I just need to go back to my PowerPoint presentation. Would help if I was, I was doing that, wouldn't it? Um, sorry, everyone. There we go, right. So the next image, this is one that won't be in your packs um, at uh, Perry, Manor, uh, Perry Manor and Latimer. Um, so this is one of St John's in the early 1960s and it's, you can probably recognise it reasonably well. There's, there's the corner um, into Henwick Road there, uh, which is RS Scans and the post office on the, on the Henwick um, Road elevation. Um, but again, some really evocative elements in this photo. You've got um, some lovely old cars in there. Milk Bar, which uh, I'm aware was a really popular place to go in um, the 50s and 60s. We had a lot of milk bars around the city. There may be a quiz question in there about those later. So, you know, just hold on to that. Um, and what I really liked about this one was the um, the young boy on his bike with his paper bag. He's obviously off on his uh, delivery round there. Uh, sorry to interrupt, Sheen. If, um, if we're not talking loud enough, it's come up just saying about in terms of volume. Just let us know now. We'll, uh, we'll, okay. we'll try and match that so it's OK. We're aware that obviously we're trying to social distance. We may not be, we're speaking at different volumes, aren't we, to try and meet that? Yeah, sorry about that. You've got the loud voice person in the front, <laughs> unfortunately. <laughs> um, and a second one of uh, St John's looking in the, the other direction. So this is from a similar sort of um, vantage point, but turned around and looking down Tybridge Street uh, before the, the flats in St John's were built. Um, you've got Cripplegate House on the right hand side, back of Cripplegate House, which originally overlooked the park, and some nice old um, 50s, 60s bus shelters in, in, the, um, in the, the front there. Um, and also, if you're looking into the, the sort of far distance down Tybridge Street, you can see the power station, which um, I'm sure a lot of people will remember. It was a pretty imposing building, um, came down in 1979, I think it was. I have to, yeah, I think I think I was put right on that one the other day. I just had one from Catherine saying, great pictures, I love the old vehicles. Oh, lovely. <laughs> yeah, they're great, aren't and, they? Uh, Andy's written no high-rise either at that time. No, so this was a, just a few years before, before they were built. Um, so another one that um, won't be in the pack, so there, there are a handful in there. Um, this one is of Temperance Street, um, which uh, was in the blockhouse area of the city. Um, really unfamiliar scene now, most of these buildings have gone. Um, but what I liked about this one was the um, the, the open van with uh, the ladies uh, hard at work there. I think what they've got in the back there, and it, it would be nice to hear from someone if you, if you know, but I think they may be um, cans relating to the um, Providence Works, the um, metal box. Um, so yeah, if anyone knows what that scene is showing, then do do please let us know. Another one again from Temperance Street, and this one I've shown a couple of times in uh, different quizzes and presentations and things. 
um, really because it does just evoke that sort of era again, the um, the corner shop, which is a pretty unfamiliar site now. We don't have many of them left, unfortunately, do we? Um, I used to work, my first job was in a, a corner shop in Victoria Street growing up. Um, so that's a slide I use quite a bit as well. Um, but what I liked about this one is um, the images of all of the advertising um, slogans on the side of the, the building and in the, the front shop window. And what I just wanted to show you um, is the level of detail that you can get from these photos. So I've just done a zoomed image here and you can see um, you can see all the writing on the on the um, adverts and you can even at the bottom there see that there are posters advertising various things. Um, so there's uh, one for Worcester races, another for um, yeah, local cinema viewings and so on. So it's, it's really... Oh, sorry. Yes. So, yeah. So it's, it's really nice to um, be able to pick up the details in those images. Um, quite often you can see, um, you know, uh, there, there are a few along the high street where you've got um, a, a parent sort of holding the hand of a, a young child who's pointing in a window, obviously saying, I want that, and uh, they're dragging them along the street behind them. So there's some, some nice little little um, stories to be told from, from those photos. Um, this one, I'm sure, is familiar to, to a lot of you. I, I get a lot of people sharing memories about the Kadena Cafe. Um, there might be a quiz question on this one later. I shouldn't have, I shouldn't have tipped you off, should I? Um, no cheating. No cheating. So this is the this is the elevation on St Swithin Street in 1951, and the cafe, as you probably are aware, wrapped around the corner into the the high street. And I'm told it was a really it was a bit of a treat to go here for um, a nice a nice cup of coffee and a, um, a Belgian bun. Uh, again, Fourgate Street, another scene that's probably quite familiar to many of you. Um, the little kiosk there in the corner, um, I'm not sure when that disappeared, but um, I don't remember it in my lifetime. I remember the chap selling newspapers uh, outside, but uh, yes, I don't remember that, that kiosk ever being there. Um, so yeah, and again, some lovely adverts and things. Um, it's one of my favourite pictures. It's lovely, isn't it? And the, the handles of someone's bike just in the foreground as well. You sort of wonder whether that belonged to the photographer. <laughs> OK, uh, another one that might be familiar. This is um, Fletcher's Chip Shop in Lowesmore in 1951. Uh, a lot of people speak um, very fondly of, of the chap that ran the place who was known at the time as Honky Fletcher. Um, yeah, so... Uh, a lot of people remember going there for their, for their fish and chips and they're, they're quite often little sort of discussions about which was the best chip shop in, in Worcester and I think this one comes up quite regularly. A yeah. um, couple of uh, local pubs that um, people might uh, be familiar with. Obviously these buildings are still are still there. You've got the Royal Exchange on the left and Charles Edwards on the right, which I think is the Slug and Lettuce now. It's changed its name a few times over the years, um, but both are still pubs. Yeah. You do wonder as well what sort of time of day these photographs were taken because uh, it's completely empty of people. <laughs> this one isn't. Uh, so it's a lovely image here of the Shambles in 1960, perhaps on a... a, a Saturday, I don't know. I don't know when people were were um, out shopping in 1960, but uh, yeah, I presume it would have been perhaps a Saturday morning, but absolutely bustling street and certainly no social distancing needed in 1960. You can just see on the left of the image there the, um, the back entrance to Woolworths, which of course is a feature of the high street that has disappeared. Yeah. Uh, so just a couple more. We're um, getting towards the end of the, the slideshow now. Um, this is a pub that comes up a lot in, in local people's memories. Um, the Golden Lion on the high, high street opposite um, the Guildhall. Um, now a uh, coffee shop, but uh, you can see in this image that you've got the original um, pub pub window. Um, this is one that was recent, uh, was well recently refurbished in the 1980s was refurbished um, because it's, um, the frontage uh, hides uh, an incredible uh, medieval timber frame. 
Um, but yeah, so all sto sorts of stories have uh, come from that building. And you can just see sneaking in on the left of the image there, uh, Freeman Hardy Willis, which I'm sure a number of people will have gone to to buy their shoes over the years. Uh, so last couple, we've got um, Blackfriars Shopping Precinct in the 1970s. Um, a lot of people will be familiar with this. Uh, obviously, the Blackfriars uh, was there until uh, the late 1980s when um, it was uh, completely uh, refurbished and redeveloped to become the Crowngate Shopping Centre. Um, I've got really fond memories of this one, uh, of the market, uh, the indoor market hall in, in the Blackfriars, where you went up the, the travelator up into this sort of dark room with all these sort of, uh, all the market stalls that in my memory are sort of like little pools of light around the place, but uh, I'm sure that's a romanticised version of, of the truth. Um, Running out of time, so we'll just quickly go through these last couple. Um, this is one again that I've shared recently um, of the Midland Bank on, um, I've put High Street there, I don't know why I've put that, it's actually Broad Street and I'm sure there are a lot of you going, no, that's not right. Um, so in, in 1973, and I think someone informed me that that was a, a Lotus, someone will be able to put me right if I'm wrong on that. I'm sure someone knows the exact model as well. But what I like about this one is the, the chap walking past in his, uh, his flared trousers there, looking back longingly at, at the, uh, the sports car. So I'm sure a few people can relate to that. Uh, and just finally, a, a colour photo, because I just wanted to, to highlight that there are some colour images in there as well. This one's a, a later one again um, in 1977. Um, a street in Warnden, possibly Robber Drive. Again, someone may be able to put me right on that one. Um, but what I liked about this one again was that um, it's that kind of, it's evoking that sort of, that past era. You don't see a scene like that with, with kids playing football in the street very often anymore. I suppose there's a lot more traffic around. Um, it's, it's, um, it doesn't happen quite so often, but I, I thought that was just a, a really lovely memory of childhood to, to end on there. Right, so um, we've come to just after 11.45 and we've promised you some music. Um, Tash and I probably need another cup of tea as well, don't we? Because we pretty much survive on tea. Um, so we're going to switch you over now to uh, Kathy Morris, who is a, a vintage singer. Um, she's going to sing a number of, uh, of hits from the 1940s. Um, if you're if you're joining us from um, Perry Manor and Latimer Court, hopefully you've got your song sheets ready so you can sing along. Um, and yeah, we hope you enjoy the next half hour of, of 1940s music. So I'm just going to get that, that video up there now. And we've had about great photos and lovely, and, and maybe over the afternoon tea we can come back to... Yes, we can probably those. revisit some yeah. of those images. So please, yes, do. If you have any memories uh, that you wanted to share of any of those images, or if there is something that you'd, you'd like to revisit in those, then just give us a shout and uh, we'll we'll try and do that for you um, while we're eating cake, because there's going to be cake today. Okay. Hello, everybody. My name is Cathy Morris, and I'm a vintage singer based in Warwickshire. I've been asked to sing some 40s and 50s songs for you today, so hopefully lots of songs that you'll know. If you do know them, then please do join in and sing along. And we're going to start off with a lovely song by the Andrew Sisters.
overcoat.
hope you all sang along to that one. Okay, we're going to keep it a little bit mellow with a lovely song by Betty Hutton. <laughs>
good one. Hope you uh, got up and had a bit of a boogie to that one. Okay, we're going to slow it down but keep it with Doris Day. And uh, quite a few other artists sang this one, so hopefully you'll know this one. <laughs> songs to sing so I hope some of you are having a little waltz to that. Okay, Frankie Lyman. <laughs> Oh, oh, oh. 
on to K Sara Sara. sisters. Now let's see if you can keep up with this one. <laughs> He 
song, it's one of my favourites, and I think that was, apart from um, one of the Vera Lynn songs, that was the first song I ever learned, and it was a challenge, but I loved every second of it. So, thank you so much for spending this half an hour with me, it's been absolutely brilliant in my lounge, so hopefully you've absolutely enjoyed it in yours, hopefully you've sung along lots, hopefully you've had a bit of a dance, if not, bit of a wiggle in your chairs but hopefully you will have absolutely loved it I really hope you, you have and um, we're going to end with a requested song by the lovely Vera Lynn and obviously she passed away at the beginning of the week so this is a very meaningful song and I think at the minute with everything that's going on it's still very relevant today so I'm going to end with White Cliffs of Dover and thank you very much. Stay safe and hopefully maybe I'll see you in the future. Thank you. <laughs> Take care. It's been lovely to sing for you. Thank you. Oh, uh, so can I just start with uh, Kathy? Amazing, brilliant. We have had a little boogie along. We did turn our camera off. Uh, Shirley, thanks for saying about being back in singers, but I think it's raining enough. That would have. Uh, um... No, no, we're we're going in with the cake instead. <laughs> Um, we're moving to afternoon tea now for the next 45 minutes and the idea was an opportunity to come together and, and sort of chat about the project and think about it and I think um, Gina and I were just talking about it's um, it's different when you're sort of working virtually to be able to you know this would be the moment where we'd say come and just grab us and, and get some cake can I just say Sheena's shown her cake she's done hers I'm still waiting on my because I like jam first 
she refused to do it. What's all that about? Just not on. Um, but we've got our social media channels. So uh, we're on Twitter, we're on Facebook, we're on the live YouTube. If there are things that you, if you want to share some memories or I think we've already had one question that Sheena's going to answer from Tim. Yes, so um, someone's been in touch via Facebook, was it? No, or... uh, YouTube. Via sorry. YouTube, sorry. Uh, so thank you for your question, Tim. Uh, it related to whether there is an index to the um, photos in the collection. Um, currently, there isn't a full index. Um, they are organised by street. So it does mean that if you have any particular queries about a place, then... Um, if you if you get in touch with me directly about that, I can have a look and see what we have for a particular area or, or um, a particular building, um, and that's fairly swift to um, to sort out. Um, moving forward, obviously, uh, when those images are on the um, platform, they will be searchable by, by um, keyword, by date, by uh, location. So all of that information will be. Uh, fully indexed at that stage so um, not completely yet but moving in that direction I hope that helps um, if you need any more um, clarification on that just get in touch no thanks Sheen I think that really helped didn't it so mm -hmm. this is just this is some time to we'll keep an eye on the the channels um, Sheen and I are going to be here and then we'll restart in terms of the oh Shirley's just uh uh, commenting on the songs, wasn't she brilliant? I think um, she was a real fine Kathy. So yeah, so thanks thank very you. much, yeah. much Kathy. We really enjoyed it. Um, so we're gonna we're gonna just stay online for for that time, and, and we'll look out for any sort of comments, memories, questions. Um, we've said forgive us now, or let us know if our drinking tea and eating scones get gets a bit loud, or we'll try and tone it down. Um, it will be very enthusiastic eating <laughs> yeah. of scones. With apologies to my Slimming World consultant. <laughs> um, so, yeah, so um, we'll just keep sort of really chatting about the project, shall we, Sheen? Yeah. Just looking at that, I will... I'm going in. Good idea. Mm. Mm. Computer's running a bit slow. We have a, a message. Let me just check that. I can't believe you won't do my PT if I want you first. Is that the Devonshire way or the Cornish way? I don't have no idea. <laughs> Someone will know. Is it the Devonshire way? <laughs> how do, we, how yeah. do you eat yours? <laughs> Go on then, I'll make you your spoon. Uh, just a, a check-in about the um, about getting online. Let's just go back to that one. Oh, we've got a good thumbs up. Thank you very much for that. Um, we were saying obviously this is our our first time, and it's all all quite new, isn't it? So it's yeah. It's a little di discombobulating not having an audience, isn't it? <laughs> well, there is an audience, we just can't see them. Yeah. Is that enough jam? Perfect. Okay, good. I was about to say, is it raspberry or strawberry? See, that's the other dilemma, isn't it? Because I'm a, I'm a oh, raspberry. raspberry yes. yeah. yeah. I realised that I didn't ask you. I'm sorry about that. Um, right. Obviously, for, for Perry Manor and um, Latimer Court, I did do strawberry and raspberry. I think there's generally just the two flavours, isn't there? I'm not for a cereal. Really. <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, I was just, um, do you know, I was thinking last night when, um, about today, and I was thinking, um, and I may have missed you say about it. Oh, oh, Catherine, oh, here we go. Hi, Heather Lewis here. There was a mention of a book. I missed the first hour, but could you tell me a little more about it? So exciting. Thanks. Oh, the book. The yes. Book, yeah, yeah, we're excited about yeah. that. So, um, Obviously, um, we all still like the traditional format of a book, don't we? It's it's great to be able to access the full collection online and, you know, we'll be able to do that in the coming months. But one thing that a number of people have uh, 
asked me about over the, the last few years uh, is whether we would be able to publish um, some of these photos um, via, via a book. Uh, and the answer is yes, we can. So um, the um, National Lottery Heritage Fund um, have agreed to fund that part of the, the project. So we will be putting together what we hope will be a really beautifully presented um, coffee table book um, with um, a number of these images. But also alongside those, what we wanted to do is actually share people's memories. Um, so we, we really sort of bring those pictures to life with, with um, with people's local knowledge and, and the stories that they have to share. So um, that will be um, happening slightly later in the project. So um, the coffee table book is due uh, to be published, I think, in February 2021. So it will enable uh, people to be in touch with memories through that that period and uh, make sure that um, things are included. So, yeah, yeah, excited about that one. Yeah. Yeah, it, it is. It is really exciting, isn't it? Mm, mm. Um, and then the other comment that we've got, which works for me, Jean, is that it needs to be scone butter. Actually, Catherine, if I uh, there was butter here, I definitely have to have butter. Right? You do need butter in any. Right. Yeah, but see, this is my theory with the cream first: is that the cream acts as the butter. So you put the cream on, and then the jam on top. It's you know, and it's how it hits. You get you know two two levels of hit. But we're yeah, we're not going to agree on this. It's <laughs> going butter, jam, and cream. That's the way to go. Thanks, Catherine. <laughs> um, but I think that you know, um, I I was picking up um, uh, the life stories book that Polly Kaiser um, had written, just thinking about about the work. And there's just something about thumbing through mm. that bit isn't there and I just think having that opportunity mm. to do a number of different events is, is one of the really exciting things about the project yeah it's um, one thing for me that although you know you know I love technology and and some of the things that it can do to us sometimes I hate it I've hated it quite a lot this week when yeah. we've been trying to sort this uh this live stream out and it hasn't played ball um but the the one thing I'll never be able to replace is the feel of of a real book. I don't think I can I can ever get on with with uh, using a a Kindle or whatever or a, yeah yeah a handheld app. It's got to be a book for me. Yeah, I have to be honest. I I am the same as you, and I, yeah, there is just something there's just something about it, isn't there? Any any type of book, mm. um, which funny enough, um, I know we mentioned it earlier, but. You know, and I think this is the the thing that I was thinking about for me is, you know, one of the first places that you kind of go to as a as a child was the library, and and of course the library's changed right now. But in terms of, you know, I just remember kind of going in there, and I don't know, it was it was a place I was felt kind of um, hugged by the the old library. Mm. Yeah, I I mean, it's an interesting one for me because I actually, my office is now based in the old library space. Course, yeah. uh, so the um, the Worcester City Council back offices are actually in the, the old library space. And I kind of have these sort of weird sort of flashbacks of memory, sort of walking through the, the um, library. Because being interested in local history, as I have been all my life and living in Worcester all my life, uh, I spent a lot of time in um, in the library as, as a child. And... Um, there are certain points around the office where I can just picture myself as a as a twelve year old sitting cross legged on the floor with a, a book yeah. and sitting there for hours and yeah it's quite strange you know that that's just the route to the the kitchen to get your cup of tea now but uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it, yeah I remember coming to um, oh we've had so we've had a cream is butter and jam is the butter sorry we'll ignore that now sorry. So Joanne then moves on to, to saying, my husband recalls peeking over the wall of the old waterworks by Gullivelt Park, paddling in the pool and coming a very close second to his older sister in wrestling matches. <laughs> <laughs> Is that one? <laughs> oh. Yeah, uh, yeah I, love, I love the old, we used to live um, quite close to the old waterworks actually. I've mentioned that I worked in uh, Victoria Street stores um, as a teenager, it was my first job. So. Uh, yeah, lived actually lived in Victoria Street, um, but yeah, I, my my favourite memory of the waterworks is when you were running along the the pathway that went um, in between the two sort of walled areas, and you could hear the echoing of your your pumps sort of slapping on the pavement as you went along. It was quite a distinctive sound. Yeah, 
<laughs> no, but it is, it is those things. I was going to say about the, the swimming pool, but um, just to share these posters saying, I haven't got any cake, does pizza count? Ooh. <laughs> I mean, yeah, that plays the cream <laughs> slash jam argument right out the water, doesn't yeah. it? <laughs> I guess it depends on the type of pizza, really. Mm -hmm. You know. I don't think I don't think it counts, Shirley. I'm afraid. Oh, sorry, Shirley. I was trying to find a way in there. <laughs> Pizza's very nice, but it's not the same as a, a clotted cream um, scone with jam. No, uh, yeah, I think um, I think if that was in in kind of things that are important to me, cream teas, as as we know, unfortunately, I, I am. Uh, it's one of my favourites, one of your favourites, really, too, isn't it? Sorry, Shirley, but that's. I, I do like that we've got this whole kind of cream slash jam controversy going on though by our live streaming. It's, you know, it was always going to be overtaken by cake really, wasn't it? Obviously. <laughs> cake is, as, as we said at the beginning, that was my favourite bit. That's why I've signed up to this project. Did you, did, did you not know? I promised um, her lots of cake. <laughs> um, no, the thing I was going to, to um, actually it was going to be a question for you because obviously um, I moved here I guess it's coming up almost 30 years ago, is it 28 years? Of course it was the, the swimming pool mm. um, and I, I, the, I hadn't looked properly about but obviously they were saying about um, the front being, about it being sunken, I came up on... Um, oh, it's Sunson Walk, yeah, yeah. yes. Yeah, so um, again, I, I'm not going to mention the, um, the popular name for the, the, the uh, swimming pool because that will be a quiz question later. Um, but the, um, yeah, the, the site of the, the swimming pool, you've got that uh, sort of sunken, well, uh, the site of the swimming pool, the, the swimming pool on, on Sanson Walk, because of course we've got the new swimming pool yeah. now as well, haven't we? Um, but the sunken garden in the front there, I'm sure many of you will remember this, that actually that is the, the site of the original pool. Um, and it's just been left in there as a garden feature. Be interesting to see actually. Obviously, that site's up for development in the um, not too distant future. So it'd be interesting to see uh, what's done with the landscaping there and whether that is a feature that it, um, is retained or whether that, um, yeah, whether, whether that goes. But, yeah. um, I'm sure people have um, ideas and opinions about that actually. No, definitely. And I guess. I guess that comes back to the bit that we was, you know, one of the reasons why you and I sort of love this project so much is that if that is changed without the photographs and the place to store them and people sharing those memories, mm. it'd be lost. Yeah. In in a way, you know, in terms of the yeah. yeah. And that's that's actually um, one of the key um, uses for the historic environment record. So it actually acts as um, a database of of as I said, all known archaeological sites and historic buildings and monuments within the city but that information is actually used to inform the planning process so yeah. if um, if a development proposal comes forward for a site in the middle of the city then the more information um, that we have about that that site um, the better because we can get a proper understanding of what's significant yeah. on that site and you know potentially what's you know what people might want to retain so um people feeding that information into the system and to uh, photographs into the system actually will you know help us to um understand our city better going forward yeah and, and make positive decisions about it as well i know which is just which is brilliant isn't it i think that's such a we've had a couple more questions oh brilliant. Other bits uh, okay Burgers have got thrown in, so Ooh. burgers win every time. Um, mm. Shirley's responded, I like the burger, but not the bun. Uh, yeah, you can get the burger this bun mm. snap, can't you? But we'll, we might be moving on to a different conversation. Yeah, in terms this of isn't enhancing my slimming world situation <laughs> at all. No. Um, <laughs> Mel asks, has Samson Walk Pool been knocked down? Do you want to answer that? No, it, it hasn't. Um, it has been um, empty for, obviously, for quite some mm. time. Um, uh, I understand that there there have been more sort of um, more issues with the sort of strip out of the building than um, were first envisaged. So I think the demolition has been put back slightly. Um, yeah, yeah, but not um, yet. <laughs> and this, Sheena, just thinking about your knowledge and and mine. Uh, so um, 
Scotella? I'm not sure if I'm saying that right, so I'm sorry. Uh, re-libraries. There used to be a library downstairs in St Martin's Church Hall on the corner of London Road and Victoria Avenue. Ooh. I loved going there as a child in the 60s. That sounds... Oh, that's a really interesting... I didn't yeah. know that. That that would be something that would be really lovely to capture as a memory um, yeah. when we, we get uh, Know Your Place Worcester up online. So, yeah, if you want to, yeah, to hold on to that and, um, yeah, and, and, and feed that into the, the site, that would be lovely. I've no idea about that one, actually. No. Mm. No, no, I was just thinking that. Sorry, everybody. I've, I'm just checking all the, the channels just to make sure we're not missing anybody. And that's just the thing, isn't it? That's how it, it grows. And then for other people in terms of wanting to create their own, that, that will be something that they think that's really pertinent to me. Mm. Um, and, that, and I want, you know, I would like to include that. Mm. And it's that sort of information, actually, that's um, often lost. It's that sort of intangible um, history that, you know, doesn't have a physical form. It's not... Yeah. It's not a building in its own right. It's a, a part use of an existing building, but you, you wouldn't look at St. Martin's Church and say, oh, there was a library in there, because you look at it and say, well, there's a church. Yeah. So so actually capturing that sort of information and knowledge is, is quite important because yeah. I didn't know it, and well, you didn't know it. No, no, no. Yeah. <laughs> hmm. I remember saying to you once, uh, not necessarily a building, but just thinking about childhood his memories and things. The, the tunnel that used to run from Elga High School, and if you were heading back towards kind of um, Warnden and Warnden villages, so you'd go through, always had a name. Oh, it was some. There was some sort of local myth that was yeah, yeah. around it, wasn't there? That Devil's Tunnel or something. Well, yeah, or... I was thinking Devil's Arch. Mm. That, 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 that kind of. Which wouldn't fit. Yeah, I don't but, know if but, anyone else can um, enlighten us on that one, actually, because I, I think it might be something that the, the kids sort of, um, I don't know, it was a story that yeah. they liked to tell, and it was something like you couldn't run under there when the trains were going over or or, or the devil would come and get you or something yeah. like that, wasn't it? It was, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. The, a sort of, you know, scary story that the kids like to, to share. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, and it's, it is. It is just some of those moments, really, isn't it? Where, yeah, there's just it's pulling all that information in and being able to share that and mm -hmm. those different bits. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know if anyone wanted us to get any of the images back up on the screen. By the way, um, if you do, we've still got a few more minutes, so just just feed it through to us. Um, obviously, via Facebook or Twitter or or YouTube. Um, I don't know how, how you're getting on at Perry Manor and Latimer Court, whether um, those, um, those hard copy uh, photos are, are evoking some nice memories for you. We'd love to hear from you if, um, yeah. if you wanted to share any of that. Um, yeah. What I might do is just um, look on their sites as well whilst, whilst we're talking. Uh, Catherine writes, I lived in, in Bristol in an area which has a lot of history. I've I've really enjoyed the Know Your Place site um, and the further information it has given me, so it's so exciting that Worcester will have the same. Mm. Mm. And, sorry. Sorry, mouthful of stone. Mm. <laughs> Carry on. <laughs> yeah, you know what? We didn't plan this very well, did we? Because I was thinking, I haven't yet um, braved trying to talk and eat scone at the same time. <laughs> you know me, I'll try yeah. <laughs> Scone and scone. Um, uh, just got a mess. Oh, I think I might have come off the wrong page on that. Let me just make sure I'm on the. On the right page with the tech, because I've taken it all off to load. Yeah. Sorry, she there was sort of fifteen engagements, and I was I just thought I'd check in case anyone had posted on that. We do have a comment. Mm -hmm. That yeah. uh, Mel writes, "I'm watching intermittently, but good luck." Oh, so, that's nice. Thanks, Mel. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just going to go on to. 
21 5 pounds and it's been really nice to have people kind of um, join us and sort of be able to share on that really in terms of so um, obviously we mentioned that um, in the world that we live in at the moment how could we come together and one of the things that that we thought about was um being able to offer sort of afternoon teas or just coming for an afternoon tea and then joining in on that mm. that experience really that we may not be together but um you can know that you're having something at the same time and feel connected yeah and then being able to sort of talk and and share through mm. through the screen Yes, I hope you're all enjoying your uh, your scones and cream and jam and things over there. I think it'd be really lovely, actually, in terms of some of the feedback has been really enjoying the... Um, oh, so we've just had another one just letting us know we're doing great. Thank you very much, John. Always good to know. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, I think that's one of the hard things, isn't it, when uh, we, we can't see people. John, that's a lovely photo. Be careful, I, I, I may post that on the feed. Oh, what's he posted? So uh, they've, they've posted saying we're doing great and there's a, a photo of John, uh, his wife, Kathy, and their dog, uh, dog sorry, Bailey. Oh. Um, thank you, John. Um, <laughs> I, I joke, I won't, we won't put you on, at least not without your permission anyway. Um, that's only fair really, isn't it, Sheen? I think that's fair. Um, just going back to this one. Does does John have um, cake over there? Oh, he's put. We can post it. Oh, brilliant! I'm. Um, how do I do? Share to Facebook. There we go. Oh, I might do that later, John. I'm starting to to show my my knowledge that it seems to be. Uh, not going through so we'll we'll oh, okay. we'll put that up um shortly but thank you for sharing um you won't let me go back What do you think your favourite memory of Worcester is? I know that's a really hard question to mm. to answer. Hmm. No, I'm just going. Um, no, it's okay. Um, I suppose things that really stand out are things are sort of special occasions, really, aren't they? So. Um, for me, I always loved um, going up the Tower of the Cathedral and being able to look out over the, the city and see all the, the buildings from above. Um, and I think that's something that's carried through for me, really, with, um, you know, with my love of uh, the, the photographs and that sort of thing. Some, some of the things that I work with are um, aerial views as well. So, um, yeah, it's sort of you have that sort of that comparison in your mind, really. And yeah, we we used to do things. We used to go to the um, county cricket club as as kids as well. But my my abiding memory of that isn't isn't the cricket. It's the fact that we used to be able to go on. There was a little park at the um, play park at, at the um, cricket ground. I wasn't at all interested in the cricket. Sorry to the cricket fans. Um, and we we'd normally get some homemade fudge to take with us as well. So um, yeah. There are probably many, many more, but um, those those are sort of things that sort of stick in my mind as being, I don't know, that feel like real Worcester memories as well. Um, oh, and also the, I'm, I'm sure many people will remember, it's not a favourite memory, it's just a, a thing that's just sort of come into my mind really, but the, um, does anyone remember the outdoor market on Queen Street car park before it moved into Angel Place? Um, and they, it was sort of in these sort of sort of yellow and red sort of under sort of yellow and red tarpaulins. I can always remember the the chap that used to shout sort of socks two for a pound, <laughs> yeah. things like that. So yeah, 
just quite a colourful sort of memory that one. Hmm. It's funny when you when you start thinking about it, isn't it? The sort of things that that come up to the surface. No idea why that particularly sticks, but um, yeah. But it is that sort of thing, though, isn't it? I think uh, about how that that happens. I know when um, when we were doing the presentation, and and I was saying about the the sort of the river or the the swans, and and then it triggers another sort of image or a story of being a child and and. Um, with friends, they lived close to Pitchcroft and how we'd go and, you know, grab a blanket and some sandwiches and then just be down there and, I don't know, just on the grass and interacting. And that that came as quite a strong image of, of there and being by the, yeah, by the river. Mm. Oh, yes. We used, we used to spend a lot of time on Pitchcroft, actually. I can remember if it was a day like uh, yesterday with the, the heat, yeah. they'd quite often have the sprinklers out on Pitchcroft and... I, I mean, I, I slightly shudder when I think about it now, because it's all river water, isn't it? But yeah, we used to just uh, run around in the sprinklers on Pitchcroft and uh, and cool down and have a, have a whale of a time. It's lovely. Yeah. <laughs> and you know, I guess I was just, um, just whilst it, you know, you and I are talking is, um, is for me, one of the things that, that I really love is the Northwick project that you did. And then when I go for the walk down Beverly and, you know, I've shared that with my children in terms of, you know, the signs, everything, even though it's different at the moment. I don't know, Jean, it might be nice just to, um, or oh, we've then got a message, um, say about the, um, a little bit about the Northwick project and what, what you did. Oh, yes. I mean, a few people will remember, I expect. And it's actually slightly bizarre when I think about it now that it finished over 10 years ago. Wow, um, was it really yeah, we launched we launched in 2010. So the yeah, the Northwick Manor Community Heritage Project um was another um lottery funded project actually. Um and it was working with the um the residents of, of Northwick and Beverly um to create this um heritage trail and really to sort of make people aware of the the heritage on their doorstep because yeah. it it's pretty invisible to to um you know in the modern landscape but originally northwick um was the site of um, the bishop's palace or a bishop's palace uh in early medieval times um and it was really trying to share that um that hidden history of of the area with um local people and and um and yeah sort of excite people about it really yeah. um and a number of people did their own sort of research as part of that project and fed that in um and we ended up with this um this lovely um sort of uh, three mile circular route um that people could uh you know go for a walk with the kids or take the dog or or, or whatever or just have a wander around the river and um and find out more about um the history of that area yeah. So yeah, that that was a really exciting one, and and a, a nice memory from that one actually was um, when we launched um, the trail and we had a big um, a big event which we would have liked to have done today. Yeah. Um, we had a big event down um, by the slip. Um, I think a, a lot of people remember actually that as a little bit of a resort um, during the twentieth century. So um, you could paddle in the river there, and uh, the the ice cream van would come down. And, a lot of people come down from places like Birmingham to uh, to paddle down by the um, the slip, uh, but that was where we held our event anyway, and um, we invited Mick Aston from the Time Team oh. to come and cut the ribbon on the trail. He sadly sadly passed away now, but um, it was really he he just I mean he he really excited the young archaeologists particularly with that, and he wore the Young Archaeologists Club T-shirt. Um, and we always used to get really excited when he wore it on Time Team and it was on the telly, you know. Um, so, yeah, yeah, that was that was particularly, that's a particularly fond memory, actually. Yeah. That's got to be one of my favourite memories of Worcester. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I could, uh, yeah, it, it, it certainly, um, seeing what you did and, and how you described it and then what came from that mm. and, and learning was just brilliant. And so just just coming back to people that are, responding so heather lewis thanks heather says great information uh, sorry great thanks for the information my granddad was born in the old seven trout trout how do you say that trout trout, trout yeah in in key streets so i have lots of, oh yes um, 
passed down memories. Mm. My family also owned W Band and Sons Rug Stores, if I'm saying that right. Yes, yes. Uh, we do have photos of that area, actually. Certainly we've got photos of um, W Band and Sons and the, yeah, the rag stores. In fact, I almost included them in the... Um, in the slideshow so apologies heather but if you do want to um if you do want to see some of those um get in touch and yeah we'll, we'll send well we, in fact we can put them up on the facebook page can't we and um you'll be able to to see them then i'll to see if i can try and do that later actually yeah and just yeah. hearing about the lots of passed down memories that are going back to to when know your place is is up that would be brilliant to mm. be able to capture those won't absolutely it? Really, yeah yeah, yeah. Um, Mel writes, my first memories of Worcester Wall when we moved were seeing the archaeologists digging in 18, sorry, 1989, I think, um, finding Roman pieces of pottery, also doing the children's quiz in the cathedral each weekend. Oh, fantastic. Yeah, so uh, if anyone did the um, the 1980s quiz that uh, I posted, uh, oh, was it last week or the week before? Recently, anyway. I lose track of the time, but... Um, the, the final um, quiz question in there um, was uh, a photograph of Roman soldiers marching in formation along um, the high street. Um, and that photo was taken in 1989. So that was to um, commemorate um, or celebrate or, or whatever it might be, um, the, the excavation that was going on at um, Dean's Way. It's called the Dean's Way Project. Um, and actually, a number of the um, the archaeologists that now work in Worcester, there may be some of them online, so hello if you're there, um, uh, they actually came to Worcester as part of that project. So there's quite a number of, of archaeologists knocking around Worcester um, and, they, and they've stayed. So it can't be, it, it, it's, it's quite a nice place to live, really, Worcester, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Sorry. I was Thanks just... for that, Matt. Um, and then Lynn uh, Denham has just uh, said, join in and share your, your memories of old hashtag Worcester um, with oh, our, our so suitably socially distanced with my fake cup of tea, which, which you can clearly see because obviously I'm holding it at such an angle if there was tea in that. Um, I'd be rather scolded at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> um, Thanks, Lynn. <laughs> Hmm. We've actually not done too badly talking through three quarters of an hour to an empty room, you know. I know, and I think just that that um, I'm aware before we even started this, going back to what, you know, one of the things you and I really thought about the project is so many people have said to me that even when they're trying um, new um, technology, that it, it can feel a bit sort of overwhelming or, or starting to type into a box and will you get it right or mm. you know so just to thank you to everyone for for posting those comments really because I know I've done that before you've gone to post something and then half of it comes up or um you're not sure if you're in the right place or you know and I think that's mm. the, you know as a as a society we're, we're um we've had to learn pretty quickly how to do some of these things and actually that it's still a lot of navigating and yeah yeah and i think we've well we've all really appreciated where you know where we have been yeah. able to being able to use technology over the last the last three months haven't we yeah. it's uh, been a funny old time really so anything that uh, we can do that enables conversations to continue is um really valuable yeah, I think so. Mm. And it is, it's just thinking it, yeah, about that. But but no, you're right. And it's, um, I'm glad it's the two of us doing it. Can you imagine if it was just one and you were there? <laughs> Talking to myself. Yeah. I do that anyway, though. No, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> um, but um, do you want to end in just the sort of last eight minutes or so, just to come back to some of the um, some of the photographs? Yeah, we could do that, couldn't we? Just put a, a couple I think that would of. Be really um, lovely. And didn't you check on that car? Didn't um. I think I did, but uh, always my nice memory to... isn't brilliant, if I'm honest. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, let's have a look. Um, hmm. I think it was in here, wasn't it? So, yeah, just have a a um, quick mooch through some of these. If anyone does know exactly where this photo is, by the way, do let us know. I, I think I think it might be Robber Drive, but um, there will be others that know better than me. So it'd be nice to um, it'd be nice to find out. Um, let me just go to the slideshow. 
to excuse me with the technology here. Okay, so yeah, so so this image, yeah. Who knows? Who are the experts in the room? <laughs> Come and tell us. <laughs> uh, there are a few people that commented on this photo actually when um, that when it went on um, Facebook uh, to say that um, yeah they still call it the Midland Bank. It's probably been HSBC for what oh twenty years now I should think possibly more actually. Um, but a number of people said they've banked with with them since at least the time that this photo was taken. So nice to have a little bit of continuity, isn't it? Um, yeah, the Blackfriars um, shopping precinct. Obviously, I mentioned the the indoor market hall, um, but there was a particular um, toy shop on down down there on the right hand side as well called Fun Fair, and uh, there were a few toys that I coveted in there. Someone commented um, that they they really wanted uh, this little uh, doll's push chair, sort of brown and orange striped push chair, and I was able to tell them that that I actually got that one Christmas. It was very exciting. Um, but the other thing that that I I used to look at in there was something called magic sand, and you should poured it in water and it made all sorts of funny shapes. And I never got any, so yeah, it remains with me to this day. Christmas present idea. <laughs> along with Mr. Frosty, which my friends bought me at, at college because I've moaned about it for so many years. Um, and yet just down at the bottom there, you can just see the, the end of the word Safeway as well. I expect a few of you will have done your shopping at um, Safeway in the Blackfriars shopping precinct. Um, it's a supermarket that's no no longer with us, isn't it? I think it merged with Co-op or something like that and disappeared. I'm not sure, I can't remember. No, I can't know in terms of, yeah, who it came from. Yeah, just thought I'd go back to this um, this image of the, uh, the shambles again because it's such a lovely sort of bustling image, this one, isn't it? Yeah. Um, it's actually where well, you can see there's this sort of crease mark along the, the middle of it, which uh, at some point in its history, this, this photo has actually been folded up. Um, and we've actually just asked for this one to be um, repaired digitally so you won't see the... Um, the crease mark in it so that's something that uh, we've been able to do as part of the project is um, get some some nice conservation work done on on things that that need it so um john france at the um the in the dark room at the um the hive is doing that work for us and he's very very good at it so looking forward to seeing the results of that yeah. and we'll post we'll post the um the image when uh, we get it back to show you um what a difference that's made uh, what else should I pick out here, Tash? Hmm. Have you? And sorry, Sheen, that, that I was just um, uh, checking our social media feeds. Have you done put Mormons? Have I missed you talking about? I didn't put Mormons in. Oh, Mormons. did you not? No. Oh. no, it wasn't one of the ones we sent out. So. Um. There you go. There's obviously a favourite <laughs> job. Of mine. Yeah, so it's still <laughs> still going strong, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. I, I hope it's. Uh, I hope it's sort of survived all of the. Um, the difficulties with lockdown and things um because uh yeah i still like going to buy my, <laughs> yeah. my i can't call this a quarter of sweets anymore can i but uh what do they what do they call it you buy 100 grams or something now don't you rather than uh, a quarter of sweets or 50 yeah, grams yeah yeah, yeah. Well, i still call it a quarter no no i was just th yeah i was just thinking that same that same thing yeah um Chocolate rumbles when I was a child. Yeah, sorry, I didn't actually talk about that one, did I? I've, I've talk, talked about. Uh, no, it's okay. No. Um, yeah, yeah. Again, if anyone, um, if anyone can shed any light on what's going on in that that image, I'd be really interested to to hear. As I said, I think it might be related to the um, the metal box works. Um, those could be um, cans that are are being produced in the factory, but. I'm sure um, someone out there knows a little bit more about the process there. Perhaps you work there. Um, um, we, we have some responses. Mm -hmm. um, Leslie writes, uh, fine, fair. I, I may have missed. And then... Fine, fair, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Glyn Go uh, Golding, Calding, sorry. My grandparents were caretakers of the Ford Motor House in Bath Road on the corner of Mill Street. Oh. Have you got any photos of that garage? It was knocked down to build Bristol Street Motors. I believe we have, yes. So 
I, I know the corner that you mean. You've got Tansel's garage on the one corner, I think, haven't you? And then the garage that you're talking about on the other. I think that's right. You might, yeah, perhaps clarify on that. Um, but yes, we do have photographs of of um of the buildings along there. So, uh, yeah, if you want to um drop us a message, Glyn was it? Sorry, Glyn. Glyn. Yeah. Um, yeah, drop us a message and um we we can have a look at that for you. Um, and send some over. Perhaps again, post them on the Facebook page. I think it's yeah. going to be useful to to do that. I think so. It gets the conversation flowing on there as well. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And then Catherine responds saying Safeway was acquired by Morrison's in two thousand and five. Ah. Uh, Leslie writes back, "Well done, Catherine." And then Catherine responds, "But Morrison's did sell off some of the branches they acquired." There so, we are. And I think do you know it's just testament really to. Um, that that sort of knowledge and, and all the things that people can share, isn't mm. there? That you just it just continues to build up. Yeah. Sorry, popped up glasses. <laughs> Do you know we are almost at one o'clock. Yeah. So that's that's been really. I hope that's that's worked for people. It'd be really interesting to get people's feedback actually yeah. on how um, we might improve that sort of um, that flow and um, you know whether we, what we've got right, what we haven't. So I know I know it's. It's a challenge to know how to how to uh, facilitate this sort of conversation when when we are sort of only talking via social media platform. But um, yeah, if anyone wants to get in touch, um, absolutely. I think it's like we've said, isn't it? And we're all learning, mm -hmm. and it's trying to. Um, oh, when you say drop us a message, can I just clarify where you want this message to be sent to, please, from now? Yeah, just a, a fa Facebook message if if that works for you. Um, you could also email um, Worcester Live Stories at Worcester.gov.uk. Uh, so that's the, the words in full, no spaces. So Worcester Live Stories at Worcester.gov.uk. Um, and that will land, land in my inbox and I can send um, any images or respond to any queries that way. Yeah. yeah. So I guess what we're thinking is use use the platform that you know um that that's our general message for that isn't it Shane? it is yeah. yeah yeah okay great well we've come up to one o'clock so that means it's time for our second round of presentations um so if you weren't with us at uh, 11 and you wanted to hear a little bit more about the project uh find find out a bit more detail about what's involved then um, you're in the right place at the right time so um, and I will just make sure that we're in the right on the right slide because we're not at the moment um, that one Okay. Um, yes, sorry, I was just looking at the um, people saying about it's great that we're doing it. Um, I think we may do a slightly shorter presentation in terms of maybe some of the detail in terms of sort of people coming on, but but also covering the main points. So so for anybody that has joined and, and doesn't know who we are, um, I'm Natasha Lord, I'm a clinical psychologist for the Worcestershire Health and Care Trust. Mm -hmm. And I'm Sheena Payne Lum. I'm the Historic Environment Record Officer at Worcester City Council. Yeah. Um, I think as we've been saying, um, this is the first time of trying this. It's it's brand new. Sheena and I are trying the um well in ensuring that we are socially distanced. Um we have mentioned over the course of the last couple of hours that we really had hoped to do a live event and we 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 talked about that, but um as, as we've said over the, the course really is that actually this has really shown to us how important it is that opportunity to connect mm. um, virtually and actually just these opportunities to sort of share memories and, and, and kind of come back and forth really reinforces it to me that you know um, one thing could have been to, to halt the project would have actually been the wrong wrong thing to have done yeah so um, in terms of the program this is just an opportunity to Sheena and I are just going to talk briefly about um, how this project came about, a little bit about the two platforms, a bit of a nod to the uh, exhibition and the book that's being mentioned, 
at half one we've got Asa who's going to do some songs from the 50s and 60s at the two after Kathy I'm really looking forward to that and a bit mm. of a boogie Might camera have to dance. <laughs> yeah <laughs> I don't know if camera's off off a off or on our, our boogie uh, here um <laughs> Sheena's then leading a, a live quiz that we've mentioned throughout and um and then we're, we're just going to kind of come back to a summary aren't we yeah um so I know we've mentioned this a few times, and actually, Mel, this comes back to the bit that you were talking about. If you've got any messages, post on the live chat at the moment. We've got an active Twitter feed, um, an active Facebook with those sort of hashtags, share your stories. There's the email if you want to ask any personal questions in relation to the, uh, to the project that Sheena can answer. We've also got an email that's looking at the... Um, second platform and i'll explain that in a bit more detail later but that enables that information to get through to the developer quite quickly which is something that we thought would be a good idea i yeah. realize i'm looking at the wrong screen i'm looking at, at mine rather than <laughs> sorry <laughs> than Tash. Yours. No, um all practice so um just moving on i guess just starting to talk briefly about how this project came about um it may be fairly obvious now that Sheena and I are friends and have been friends for many years. Although I don't um, agree with your, your position on scones and cream jam and I'm no, sorry. No, no, this may be a terminated friendship. Um, <laughs> not sure how we're going to do the rest of the project on that. Um, but uh, no, and I, and I think um, just very briefly, I think um, I'd, I'd said before that when I uh, used to work in the black country, we had somebody that would come and visit with photos of Wolverhampton. Um, for me, because I don't come from Wolverhampton, that, that, that'd actually been quite a privilege when you could hear in terms of the stories that people shared and how people just connected and sort of came alive and, and in terms of well-being. And I know when I came to Worcester, um, and that there may have been things out there, but I wasn't aware of them. But I did know somebody that I thought I could ask for free. I have to be honest, Sheen, I was coming, uh, asking, beg, borrow, and, you know, steal, um, about coming to do something for us and, and what we could do. And I think it was at that point that you, um, I'll, I'll never forget the conversation because actually I was, um, just to, in, in this story, I was actually on the ward. I'd had the idea. I couldn't wait, um, so so I found a room and I rang you and I've got I've got this idea, can you? Yeah. Um, and I just remember your excitement really over the fact that you'd had the that collection of thirty five thousand images, and you were trying to think of how to um, sort of um, bring that sort of to the public, and have been starting to think about that um, and and how we started to do it and. And for me, there was something about those images would mean that for, for the people of Worcester, if you were creating your life story, there is evidence now saying we're, we're going the other way, that actually we can be bombarded by the internet by slightly too much. And actually, for me, know your place will be somewhere where you, you can think, I went to this school, look it up, pull out that, that photograph and that that image and people will be able to create their own life stories which was just so exciting um so sheena and i had all these uh wonderful not to stop saying brilliant that people get <laughs> the wrong wrong idea about that but um yeah you it started with two people that were passionate about photographs and inclusion and bringing people together and we started to talk to other people and Paul, I'm going to name check you again, Paul Edwards, because for me, you're somebody at Platform Housing uh, was, uh, you've always come back and just said, this is, um, you know, this would really make a difference to some of the people that you're working with, those opportunities to sort of come together. Every single person that we've met, you think about Deb Fox, and I, and I cannot name everybody, and I wish I could really. Because um, for me, there was something about that enthusiasm of people saying, you know, this would really work with maybe something that you're already doing, or I'm not talking to this cam, this one, stop that, that <laughs> one. But you know, this this is something that um, will will really make a difference for people. And um, I think just to be clear, all the people that we're going to say thank you to at the end are offering their services for free so whether that's been in terms of promotion 
offering venues, putting things out, just in terms of that support to get it where it was, is credit to them. Um, and and part of that was um, Jodie's story, which listen to the the original one, Jodie, because or if we have time, I want to come back to to your story about your dad and the chemist and and taking all the jars out of the basement because I love that that thing about people wanting to keep history and for it not to be forgotten and, and sharing so with that in mind with the organizations that that had said yes this is a really great idea we took it further didn't we and we held the public event at the guild hall in 2017 um, and for me, Sheena, that's going to be a memory that I'll always have is your idea of the, the washing line and the blown up photos of the high street of Worcester and just seeing all the people walking up and down um, and just the stories that were shared and people coming up to us and saying that, that you know, um, you know, we, we had people writing memories, uh, trying to, to capture things that they didn't want to get lost and, and, and building that richness that's kind of going to go forward. And to have over 1,500 people attend, I think we were hoping we'd get, I don't know, I don't know what we thought, but not the number that we had. Yeah, it was amazing. It was overwhelming, but it was amazing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know if we provided enough cake, thinking about cake. Mm. I always over cake to yeah. cake. Yeah. Um, <laughs> But I think uh, I, I think the the that thing and, and and I've noticed it today even even if it's just the two of us in the room when you bring a photograph it can evoke so many sort of different memories and stories and that triggers somebody else's story and you can get that sense of sense of purpose that you can give something back or some you know that connection about being with people it helps people to understand who you are it's just it's that really isn't it mm. so as we said next came the hard part um i think it's always acknowledged that it's here's an idea how to how do we then put that into into place so it goes forward um and I don't know about you, but I'm just really pleased with the number of people that have kind of said yes and, and backed the project. So just to acknowledge those people, and we really wanted to do this, or, or organisations, is the uh, NHS Worcestershire Health and Care Trust, um, obviously uh, d donating sort of my time. Um, we are going to be hosting the second um, Worcester Live Stories platform, which I'll go on to talk about. We're having support from our IT team and, and Leslie and Catherine have to sort of um, thank you for your support there. As Sheena's mentioned so uh, a couple of times during the presentation about um, the Heritage Lottery Fund and getting money to be able to... National Lottery Heritage Fund is Sorry. now known. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> you just, I forget. Um, you've mentioned that before and I do apologise. Obviously when we first started <laughs> it was just HLF and now I can't um, I can't let go of that. Um, oh, skipping past that quickly, um, we said about obviously Worcester City Council um, are also backing the project and, and one example is the um, time trail which I know that I'm really excited about. And then finally but, but importantly um, Historic England have funded the Association of Dementia Studies to look at the impact um, or explore, sorry, um, our kind of identity and, and um, well-being located to our our home, our where we live. Um, and for you and I, I guess when we're thinking about this, is there are um, historic environment records, which is where you hold your collection of the thirty-five. Thousand. I know there's more, but in terms of this project, mm. um, there are other places that also hold similar collections for their cities and um, and, and so forth. Yeah. Um, and and trusts that can work together. And for me, that this is something that maybe we start here and um, supports the people of Worcester. But I guess one of our hopes is that other people will take up this idea um, and that we'll see it sort of replicated further yeah. that would be amazing yeah. wouldn't it yeah mm. yeah really amazing just in terms of you know being able to make a difference for people mm. um i realize this is more brief and this is just so that we've got time for the um the photographs and the singing and that we stay on time because um i know i could talk about this project forever really which you have to be careful about 
The slide that we're showing you now is, um, so as we've said, Sheena works for Worcester City Council. They will be um, owning and hosting the first platform that you see at the top, Know Your Place. Sheena's going to talk about that in more detail. The second platform is going to be developed by Worcestershire Health and Care Trust. And as you can see that there are arrows in terms of, and we'll go on to talk about this, and we have done, about how Know Your Place will be able to um, take images and uh, memories from there and that, that will be able to populate the Worcester life story. So we'll talk about this in more detail, but it's just to get that overarching picture. Thanks, Tash. Okay. Um, so, yeah, so I promise to talk a little bit more about Know Your Place, Worcester, um, uh, and include some lovely images as we go. This this is one that we, we shared earlier and uh, we'll talk a little bit about again in a bit as well. Sorry, I'm, I'm stumbling over my words here for some reason. Um, so the 35,000 historic photographs um, obviously form part of the Worcester City Historic Environment Record, which is um, the, um, the record that I manage uh, as part of my day job. Um, and that is a, a database of all known archaeological sites, historic buildings and monuments for the city of Worcester. Um, so the, the historic photographs just form a part of that. Um, but obviously, they're for in terms of, um, you know, for local people and for local memories and things, they're a really kind of uh, pertinent and sort of rich resource. And um, we really just have, have known for a long time that we wanted to get these um, out there and made available to people. Um, and so with the launch of this project, uh, we will be able to do that for the first time. They will be online um, over the coming months. Um, and we've been looking at ways in which to facilitate that. Just before I move on, I should point out, I mentioned earlier that I my first um, job was in Victoria Street stores. Um, and that's a picture of it there. So I had to include that really, didn't I? Absolutely. <laughs> um, so the other thing that we really, um, realize that we need to be able to do with the, these photos is to be able to search them um, geographically. Um, so there's a, an image there of the first edition ordnance survey map from uh, the 1880s um, and that, that forms part of the um, historic environment record as well. Uh, so just to make you aware that that, that resource is, is part of it. Um, so firstly, we want to be able to search them geographically, perhaps in the way that you might search a Google map or similar. Secondly, we want to make sure that we're able to search them thematically. So if you were looking for an image of um, a school or a corner shop or um, your, your Lotus car parked outside the Midland Bank, <laughs> I think it's Lotus, I think. Uh, um, then you would be able to you would be able to put that into the search and and find an image of that that would help you um, tell your own um, life story. Um, and luckily, we've been aware for some years that um, Bristol City Council had uh, developed this incredible mm. resource themselves be, uh, called Know Your Place. Um, it's a map based uh, web platform, that, that's a screen grab of it, you can see there. Um, and what it does is it overlays different information. So you've got your modern map there, that, that's the right hand part of the, um, the map image. On the left you can see there's a little slither of the historic map which you can overlay across the, the modern map. So you can compare um, modern with uh, historic, which is something we wanted to be able to um, provide for local people and have that as our, our base map so you can then um, you can then share um, geographically based information such as your historic photographs. So on the right hand side of that image you've got a number of resources, I'm pointing at the screen, you can't really tell what I'm pointing at, um, but there's a list of different resources that you can uh, make appear on that map and then if you click on one of those um, images or one of those points sorry uh, it brings up the information behind that particular point in that street so you can see there's a little thumbnail image there and then if I were to click on that image again it brings up the full um, the full-sized image so you get to see the detail of that 
Um, and again, going back to the map, you can also click on it for further information. So this is where you would be able to find um, the date of the image, uh, what it shows, if there, there was an event taking place, if there were particular individuals involved, what vehicles they were potentially, all of that information will sit there. So that's, um, that's also where we would have the opportunity uh, for people's memories to be um, made available as well. So if someone had a particular story about um, an image or a site, then we could potentially have that information there. Um, so we've got our photographs and our historic maps, and those can be made available online through um, our own Know Your Place Worcester. The third element that we really felt was important was to be able to continue to enrich and enhance that um, collection um, with local knowledge and local people's stories and memories and um, your own photographs and material that you have at home. Everyone's got the, you know, a stack of photos in the, the you know, dining room drawer or whatever that, um, you know, from, from their, their past, from their childhood, um, through um, the years growing up. Um, and so many of those really just kind of bring life to the collection um, that we have. Uh, ours are, are more focused really on, on buildings and places um, but it's the, it's the people that populate those places that really bring the stories to it. Um, so we're really, we're really keen to be able to facilitate people sharing that information um, with the resource. Uh, and that's something that is also possible via Know Your Place. So you have a community layer um, that people can upload their own images to, perhaps their own oral histories. It might be a written memory. You might want to record your memory on audio and upload that. Um, there are all sorts of ways that you could share information with the site. And we will be providing uh, events and workshops on that uh, once the, the resource is up and running uh, so that you can, you can do that um, as, as, the, um, as the project goes on and into the future. Um, it will the, the resource will obviously give us a platform uh, going forward for further heritage data to be shared. Um, we're starting with with the photos because we feel that those are, are what are most pertinent for local people. Yeah. Um, but other information potentially can be shared on there using the Bristol example. Um, they have their historic environment record data on there, so information about it could potentially appear. On, on that platform. So there's all sorts of other information you then um, could, could access through the resource. Um, most importantly, of course, we want to ensure that this information is, is made available to everyone for free, unrestricted. So you'll be able to share that material um, with your friends and family. You can um, start conversations together if you like and give me a break from them um, um but yeah there's that that sort of free and, and unrestricted access to that material uh so just as an, an idea of the timetable and the time frame for that um we are um working with bristol city council as we yep. speak yep. um uh, peter and so paul horton at bristol are working on uh, the development of know your place worcester and that is kicking off in July, so next month, coming around really rapidly now. Um, and in order for that to um, be tailored to um, the needs of local people and to ensure that the language is understandable, that it's intuitive, we will be holding um, a series of user workshops during July and August. So that will just be looking at things like the language. So the layout and the look of the uh, the website will be um, similar to the the Bristol model, but uh, you'll be able to look at things like, um, you know, perhaps if you're uploading material, what what questions it's asking you, and whether that's that makes sense to you. So those those things we'd really value people getting involved with, yeah. and we'll be sending um, communications out about that over the the um, the next few weeks. So do look out for that. Um, it'll be plastered all over Facebook and our website and Twitter and anywhere else that we can put it. So you might be sick of us by the end of it. Um, uh, then moving into November, uh, we should have the, the sort of outline um, website up and running. It will go into beta testing. So that will be a soft launch of the, the website just to make sure that any snags or any issues um, that might be there are picked up before we then launch it fully 
in December and um, everyone can go crazy uploading their photos and memories. So that, that's going to be a really exciting time for, for the project once we're able to, to do all of that and for people to share with us. So over to you, Tash. <laughs> I was going to say, I'm um, breathe. <laughs> and, uh, um, and, and just to say before we carry on, is as uh, a couple of people have posted, just to say they think it's a, a really great project that we, uh, you know, all of us are trying to work towards and, and kind of the difference it will make. So that feels really nice. Yeah, um, yeah and I, you know, and I think similar to how I, for me, when we spoke about it earlier know your place um, is really going to enable the second platform so this the second platform kind of has its two main uses will be that people will be able to develop their own personalized Worcester life story and also um, one of the reasons as I said for for contacting Sheena was thinking about those life packs and for somebody like me who may not have your you know wealth of knowledge to be able to share photos and and things to be able to do that. Um, very briefly, we spoke about um, and we've spoken about over the course of the project. Some people are back one. Um, it can be hard to sometimes get online. Uh, things maybe don't seem intuitive. Um, I, I shared a story recently. I, I will never forget the first time I went to a car parking um, machine where they've changed it from you know put your money in, press the ticket. Um, bring back the ticket to you know you had to put all sorts of things in and read it and people tutting behind me as I try to to negotiate it um, and and I share that because one of the things that we're going to be doing alongside this is just developing um, and with the support of um, a number of different organizations in platform housing uh, Worcestershire Association of Carers with their digital champions being able to um, Got to stop looking at mine and, and go to yours because I'm used to that. Is just that opportunity to um, have a look and feel comfortable and be able to do it. So if you need any help, we're going to work alongside on that. So moving on to the two platforms, yeah. uh, two sorry uses of the platform. So the life packs. Um, we're in a different place for Know Your Place. We are coming right from the very beginning. So this is an idea of um, this is what we think. Um, we hope we're on the right lines but actually what that would look like we want to do with you so um so examples might be um i was talking to sheena how i've noticed that people may be talking about baton hall or it's it's different things and i think um just being mindful that there are things out there we might not be aware of so what we're going to do in this bit is look at sort of developing packs with people and that will include um photographs sort of actual, you know, sort of facts that you've um, got about a place or an area. Um, and then people's memories will be a real opportunity that maybe you're a, an individual and wants to know more or a family. Or for me, in terms of my work and, and that first conversation is, I know when I spoke to Paul and other people, is an opportunity for people to come together over a shared experience. Could that be working or a, an area? So it's it enables that in a in an easily accessible way yeah. and that was something that was really important to me yeah. uh, next slide Sorry. that that last bit really is so again we are at the very beginning of this and, and really what we want to do is hear your thoughts of how do you want it to look what do you want it to look like what would the content be um i said earlier that the photo that you see there is is mine not as artistic as um as others but i was just sharing that um but down by the river is a really kind of important place for me in, in terms of Worcester and if I was building my own life story um, I think that's something that I would want included so it was just to kind of share those are some of the things that maybe will come up um, but we don't know and it's an opportunity to see the, the life story will be private so that will be something that you'll be able to access and it'll, it will be your choice whether you want to share that it may be something you do alone you may do it with families it may be something where you are living in a care home and you want to share and it helps in terms of communication and you can talk more about this equally previously um, there is so many benefits already noted in terms of life story that i won't be able to cover here but there is more evidence coming out in terms of it moving digitally and how we can move forward. So it may be 
um, we're looking at that opportunity to do movies and include audio clips. So that may be somebody saying, you know, this is the place that I went to school. And it, those are found to be really powerful. So if you want to know more about that, I'm aware we're almost out of time for this bit, is, um, is just let me know. Um, and then finally, how to get involved. So similar to Sheena and talking about Know Your Place, we're going to be holding a series of workshops. Those will start next month, end of next month, and we'll be looking at that. And as I said before, this will be an opportunity to be there right from the beginning. We'll all be working together to look at the kind of the design, the concept, the opportunity to try out and make sure that we've got it right. And then that will that will continue to go. Um, Sheena's already said this, we're going to do numerous updates in terms of what we're doing. Um, I hope you won't get sick of us, that'd be a bit sad. <laughs> um, and we hope that we will, um, I think you said it, having a good wind. I, I liked that, I thought I'd borrow it from you. Um, that the second platform will, will be live in early spring yeah. 2021. Lovely. Right, so very, very rapidly, because I'm aware we are up to um, the nail for, um, for Asa coming on to sing. Yeah. I will just share a couple more of the, um, the images from the slideshow um, with you and talk through those a little bit again. Um, so the, uh, the first one on screen here, again, is the one that I've made the slight appeal to people um, about whether you have any knowledge of um, where this photograph, well, not where this photograph was taken, sorry, but what it's actually showing. You've got some ladies there in the um, the uh, the back of uh, the, the van, possibly loading material in, uh, and they may be, uh, oh, what am I doing to the machine? Uh, they, they may be uh, cans from the uh, metal box factory. So we just like to know, really. Be interesting to hear if anyone um, has memories of that or whether you even, perhaps you worked there yourself. Um, let me just get the rest of the slides up, sorry. Right, okay. Um, so again, another one in Temperance Street, 1951. A lot of these images are from 1951. There seems to have been a, a survey, of, uh, particularly of shops and, and um, uh, advertising signs and that kind of thing during that time. Uh, and it covers most of the city. Uh, so this one is a real classic image of a corner shop and all those amazing um, advertising boards and um, plates on the on the side of the the shop there and just to show you some of the detail um, you can really zoom in on these images they're really um, really sort of high quality negatives um, so you can see the Coleman starch and the fries pure cocoa up the top there uh, and then a poster for Worcester races down at the bottom as well uh, again, another one that uh, is going to come up in the quiz later, so I should move swiftly on from that. But uh, the Kadena Cafe is one that I'm sure many of you are familiar with and have happy memories of. Um, Fourgate Street Station again in 1951 with the uh, the little kiosk outside, which um, uh, hasn't been there for many years. I certainly don't have any um, recollection of it being there. But it's always nice to see the cars and, and things in the, the street on these ones. Uh, and then Fletcher's Chip Shop in Lowsmore uh, in 1951 again. Uh, there have been, been a number of disputes via Facebook about which was the best chip shop in Worcester at that time. Uh, Fletcher's certainly comes out uh, near, near the top of those discussions. So, uh, it's lagging a little bit on there, Sheen. It's um, still showing Fallgate Street. I think that's just a lag in the YouTube film. Um, I will just skip skip on slightly because uh, we are running out of time. Uh, so this one of the, the shambles in 1960. Uh, again, I love this image. It really shows the sort of hustle and bustle of um, of um, people going about doing their, their shopping around the, the city centre. And the shambles, of course, was uh, the area of the city where all the butcher shops were. Um, don't think there's a single butcher shop left in, in the shambles now. I may be wrong. Um, but yeah, interesting yeah. one. Can anyone answer that? I was trying to... Yeah, so yeah. Feel free to, again, to, to comment via social media channels. Um, and then... 
Um, then just moving on to um, the Midland Bank in uh, Broad Street, not High Street, spot the deliberate mistake there. Uh, a little bit later, this one in 1973. Um, and as I mentioned earlier, I really like the fact that the uh, the chap wearing flares walking by is sort of looking longingly over his shoulder at the, the yeah. sports car. Um, right, so I've sort of hopped through a few of those, but I think given no. the, the time i think we should move on now um we've got a little bit of entertainment for you now from asa who's going to bring you some hits from the 90s and 19, 1950s and 60s um and you may have to excuse us because we might have to have a little boogie along to this one um so let's just get asa on the go sorry asa that freeze frame is uh there we go Hello everyone, my name is Asa and I'm pleased to say I've announced to be part of the Worcester Life Stories Project launch event. I shall be singing some songs from the 50s and 60s and I hope it brings back some happy memories. I hope you all sing along. Young one shouldn't be afraid to live love while the flame is strong. Cause we may not be the young ones very long. Tomorrow, why wait until tomorrow? Cause tomorrow. Sometimes never come So love me There's a song to be sung And the best time is to sing it while we're young but Once in every lifetime Comes to love like this Oh, I need you, you need me Oh, my darling, can't you see the young dream? Should be dream together. And the young heart shouldn't be afraid to live love while the flame is strong. Cause we may not be the young ones that long. Once in every lifetime Comes to love like this Oh, I need you You need me Oh, my darling Can't you see the young dream Should be dream together And the young heart Should not suffer love Why must I be a teenager? Love, no one but you. I need the love you wanted. You say we're blue. When you wanna make me cry, that won't be so hard to do. And if you should say goodbye, I still go on loving you. Teach my I had a fault, no one but you. I mean, you say we're blue. Well, if you want to make me cry, that won't be so hard to do. And if you should say goodbye, I still go on loving my ass. The stars up above. Why must I be? A teenager in love. Why must I be a teenager in love? 
Okay, Billy, next up is Bobby Darren, Things. Every night I sit here by my window Staring at the lonely avenue Watching lovers holding hands and laughing You got me thinking about the things we used to do Like walking up, like kissing the dark Like a terrible light what about the nights we cried? Things like a lover's vow Things that we don't do now Think about the things we used to do Memories are all I have to cling to And a heartache some friends I'm talking to When I'm not thinking about just how much I love you well, I'm thinking about the things we used to do We're like walking the park We're like a kiss in the dark We're like a terrible ride What about the nights we cried? Things like a lover's vow Things that we don't do now Thinking about the things we used to do I still can hear you box softly playing And the face I see each day belongs to you Where well, there's not a single sound And there's nobody else around Where well, it's just me thinking about things we used to do Like walking the park Like kissing the dark Like a terrible ride what about the nights we cried? Things like a lover's vow Things that we don't do now Thinking about the things we used to do Staring at the lonely avenue Got me thinking about the things we used to do Staring at the lonely avenue yeah, it got me thinking about the things we used to do. Okay, next up we've got a bit of Alvis here, huh? Uh, this one's called Bruce Ray Shoes. Well, it's one for the money, two for the show. Three to get ready now, go get go, but don't you step on my first way to you. We can do anything, we're well, lady off for them first way to you. We can knock me down, step on my face, slander my name all over the place. But do the thing that you wanna do, well, I can't hardly lay off for them to you, so don't you step on my first way to you. We can do anything for me, off of them blue way too. Let's go! We can burn my house, steal my car, drink my liquor from a no food job. But do the thing that you wanna do. But I'm on honey, lay off and choose and don't you step on my boots with you. We well, can do the thing, but lay off of them boots with you. Woo! Oh, 
Words to one for the money, two for the show. Three to get away now, go, 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 but don't you step in my blue suede shoes. We can do anything, but lay up on that blue suede shoes. Well, it's a blue, blue, blue suede shoes. A blue, blue, blue suede shoes, babe. Blue, blue, blue suede shoes, yeah. Blue, blue, blue suede shoes. You can do anything, but they off for that blue suede shoes. This one's called, Come On Everybody. Come from miles around To hear playing music till the sun goes down 
Baby, someday your name would be a lot singing. Johnny B. Cook tonight. Go, 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 Johnny, go. 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 Go. Will Johnny be good? Time for some Buddy Holly now. Oh my love, oh my kissing, you don't know what you've been missing a boy. When you're with me, oh boy, gotta go to see that you are one man for me. Oh my life, I'd be away, can I there be no guest in a boy? When you're with me, oh boy, gotta go to see that you are one man for me. Shadows falling, you can hear my heart falling. Little bit of love me get me right. I'm gonna see my big tonight. All my love, all my sins. You don't know what you've been missing, oh boy. When you're with me, oh boy, got a rule to see that you are one man for me. Woo! Oh my love, oh my kissing, you don't know what you've been missing, oh boy. When you with me, oh boy, gotta go to see that you are one man for me. Oh my life, I'd be waiting to not there be no hesitate, no boy. When you with me, oh boy, gotta go to see that you are one man for me. Oh, it's the fear and the shadows are falling And you can hear my father calling You don't really love me, get me right I'm gonna see my baby tonight Oh, my love, oh, my kissing You don't know what you've been missing, oh boy When you're with me, oh boy Got a rule to see that you are one man for me Oh, with the hell little things you say and do Make me want to be with you for good Grey bomb is crazy feeling now I know it's got me reading when you say I love you for Grey bomb The way you dance and hold me tight The way you kiss and say goodnight Grey bomb is crazy feeling now It's a crazy feeling and I know It's got me reading I'm so glad That you're feeling your love for me Ray Vaughn, Ray Vaughn, tell me, tell me Do not be lonely, tell me You love me only, Ray Vaughn with me It's a crazy feeling and I know It's got me reeling I'm so glad that you're feeling your love for me Rave on, rave on and tell me, tell me Do not be lonely, tell me You love me only, rave on with me ah,
Okay, I'm going to slow it down for the last couple. I hope you've all enjoyed yourselves. Uh, unfortunately, I'm almost out of time. But this next song is going to be Can't Help Falling In Love With You. Liv Al will see you again. And I, we 
will by and by no true love waits sometimes we'll sigh sometimes we'll cry and you know why just you and I no true Thanks for listening, everybody. Thanks very much, Asa. Um, I hope you all had a really good singing and dance along to that. We we were having a little bit of a boogie here, weren't we? We were. Um, so we have just gone two o'clock. So it is time for our live quiz. So let's get it up on the screen. And just to say that Tash is still um, checking the social me media channels and things in the background here. So if you have got any um, queries or memories or anything else you want to share with us, we're not gonna tell you the quiz answers. Um, so don't, don't, don't try that, but um, she won't answer with you. Um, but anything else you want to talk through with us, then do just hello to anyone that's just uh, tuned into the, um, the YouTube channel. Um, I'm hopeful that we're going to have a good time with this quiz. Yeah. It, there's three rounds, 10 questions, so it's a bit of a bumper one. Uh, we'll go through each round, um, give you a chance to grab a sip of tea in between, and then after the third round, we'll go through all the quiz answers. So no cheating, um, challenge your friends, and good luck, everyone. Right, okay, let me just get the, uh, the thing up on the screen. Um, it's always a little bit of a lag when I do this, isn't there? Uh, no, that's the answers. I won't give you the answers straight away. There we go. Right. Okay, round one. A sort of general round, this one. So, two popular city centre pubs in Cool Market here. What is the name of the pub on the left of the picture? So, what is the name of the pub on the left of the picture? Never quite sure how much time to give people. Do you think that's enough time? I think that's enough time. I think time. that's enough time, right. I don't want to give you too much time. No, I will look to see if anyone responds um, to let us know. Yeah. Uh, a Worcester landmark pictured here in 1951. Where is it? Does anyone recognise this building? 
where is it or was it, should I say? Okay, next question. Milk bars, we mentioned these earlier in, in the day, if you were with us then, uh, they were a popular place to hang out in the 1950s and 60s. And there were several around Worcester, but where was this one? I love the bicycles lined up outside. So where was this milk bar? What street? Okay, enough time. Next question. St John's Theatre is pictured here in 1954, a popular cinema for many years. And this is a question that might appeal to uh, mine and Tasha's generation, actually. It was later to become a nightclub, a music venue. What was it then called? And I've got a pos uh, two possible answers for that one. What nightclub was it? Okay, next question, number six, or number five, I should say, sorry. Um, the Market Hall in High Street pictured here in 1951. When it was first constructed, the Market Hall, which ran between High Street and the Shambles, boasted an elaborate fountain as its centrepiece, produced by the city iron workers Hardy and Padmore. The fountain was later moved. Where in the city can it now be found? So where in the city can the fountain that used to stand in the market hall now be found? They're easy if you know. That's a helpful comment. I like so to be helpful. Be, <laughs> okay. Everyone got that one written down? Next question. Another one that we've referred to during our memory yeah, se yeah. section here today. So picture here of the former public baths in Sanson Walk in 1951. By what popular name was this swimming pool better known? So what was this swimming pool better known as? Okay. Next question. The public hall in the corn market, 1960s. So this one comes from the Changing Face of Worcester website. Uh, thank you very much to the, the team there, to Tudor House Museum, who are actually one of our partners on the project. Yeah. Um, originally, this building was built as a music hall and public meeting space, and it was used as a WRVS cafe during World War II. By what name did it later become known? And you may remember doing things like roller skating in this building later in the 20th century, mid 20th century. So what name was it known as after the war? Next question. So we have a view here across the river to South Quay. Standing on the bank overlooking the river is a school. So just to the left of the uh, St Andrew's Spire in the picture there. Can you name that school? So what was the name of the school above the river there? Okay, next question. JNF Halls on the Shambles in 1951 here, beautiful building. What sort of business was it? What business was JNF Halls? Okay, moving on to the final one in round one. Okay. A view along Friar Street here in 1951, just out of shot are Laslett's Almshouses, just up on the right there. And they stand on the site of another building. 
Was it A, a former cattle market, B, a city jail, or C, a school? So what was the building that the, what, what building was on the site of Lazlitz Arms Houses before they were built? Was it a former cattle market, the city jail, or a school? And that is the end of round one. So grab a sip of tea. Um, let us know if you're if you have any questions or if there are any problems with the quiz questions coming through, anything like that. If you have any memories, we're uh, checking Facebook and Twitter and YouTube as we speak. Um, we will restart in just a few seconds, but just to give you a moment, just to pull your thoughts together, check your answers. Yeah, nothing coming yep. through so far, so we're doing okay, Shoot. Excellent, right. <laughs> right, round two, names and events. So, one of the best viewpoints in Worcester can be enjoyed from Fort Royal Park. What famous historical event is associated with this site? So we're testing some of your historical knowledge in this round. What famous historical event is associated with the site at Fort Royal Park? Next one. Name two of the well-known musical acts that have performed at the Gourmont in Fourgate Street. So there are a number of famous musical acts that have performed at the Gourmont in Fourgate Street. Name two of them. I hope some of you attended some of them. It'd be interesting to hear about that. Okay, a few more seconds. Okay, next question. Which famous comedian opened the Blackfriars Square development in May 1969? I know some of you were there. We've been hearing about that. <laughs> so which famous comedian opened the Blackfriars Square development in May 1969? Okay, next question. The Theatre Royal here in Angel Street in 1951. What was the name of the famous male impersonating music hall star who was born in Worcester and later performed on stage at this theatre? Again, testing some of your historical knowledge here. So which music hall star born in Worcester and later performed on stage at this theatre? What was her name? Okay, next question. Lovely summer's day here at New Road. Uh, three generations of the same family, Basil, Damien and Brett, have played for Worcestershire County Cricket Club. What is the famous family name? So what is the family name of Basil, Damien and Brett? who played for Worcestershire County Cricket Club. Next question, a bit more history. Royal Worcester Porcelain was granted its royal warrant by which King of England? Was it A, Charles II, B, George III, or C, William IV? So which royal, which King of England granted Royal Worcester Porcelain its royal warrant. Charles II, George III, or William IV? Okay, next question. Pictured on the left of this image is the Bell Inn St John's, historically where the Worcester St John's Cycling Club held their meetings. Perhaps the club's most famous member was known as the Worcester Wonder winning a gold medal at the 1908 Olympic Games in the team pursuit. What was his name? 
So what was the name of the Worcester Wonder who won a gold medal at the 1908 Olympic Games? Next one. Shown here is the King Charles Pub in New Street, originally part of a much larger house built in 1577 that wrapped around the corner into Corn Market. How did the pub get its name? So how did the pub get the name King Charles? Next question. Here's a lovely view along the high street in the 1980s to the cathedral. Which famous Worcester son is commemorated by a statue at the end of the high street? So which famous Worcester son is commemorated by a statue at the end of the high street? Next one, and the last one in this round. This incredible scene, something that wouldn't be happening today, uh, marks the occasion in 1951 when a famous individual arrived at the Guildhall to receive the freedom of the city. Who was it? So he, who received the freedom of the city in 1951? Okay. Right, that's the end of round two. Have another slug of tea, get yourself some cake, shake yourself off. <laughs> Anything coming through, Tash? Nope, no, 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 checking all channels. They're all um, working hard. They are all working hard. <laughs> and it's just been, yeah, people are just saying that it's started. Great. Okay, so the final round, round three, is name that shop. So we have a series of, of images from the collection here with the names of the shops blanked out and you need to tell us what the name of that shop was. This should be interesting, shouldn't it? Right. So, M something food stores here. Fill in the blank, beginning with M. Something food stores. Okay, next question. Two blanks to fill in here. So R and D, fill in the blanks. Okay, next question. Name the cafe. <laughs> if you were paying attention earlier, you're doing all right. <laughs> okay. Everyone got that written down? Next one. Name the shoe shop. Name the shoe shop. Next question. Again, fill in the blanks. T something F something Boot Company Limited. Something something Boot Company Limited. Sheena, are people meant to be writing their um, their answers? Privately, just a couple of people have, have posted online, um, and then you're going to, to um, say the answers, aren't you? Do you yeah. Might help just to... So probably best not to share the answers on the YouTube feed if you can possibly avoid it, just because you're giving the answers away. <laughs> I know it's tempting. Next question. 
Okay, another one filling in the blanks. So something, something and something, beginning with T, W and T. Something, something and something. Hopefully this is really challenging people. Next one, F, W, W and Co Limited. So the, the second W is the blank. F, W, blank and Co Limited. Not to worry, John W. Easy mistake. <laughs> <laughs> Giving his answers away. I wonder if anyone here yeah, possibly. <laughs> <laughs> Next question. Okay. Something and co. S. Something and co. Beginning with S. Fill in the blank. Okay. Next one, H something, beginning with S. Fill in that blank. H something. Okay, I think the next one might be our final question. It is. Something and something. M and S. <laughs> mm. Mm. Struggling with that one. <laughs> right. Everyone happy? Say yes. <laughs> okay, if you want to just grab yourself a another sip of tea or a piece of cake or whatever, I think we'll go straight into the answers. So, if it come up for me, why is that not showing? Mm. Hmm, why are my answers not showing? Bear with me, technical difficulty. That's better. Phew. Right. Okay, so Swap your papers or whatever it is you're doing. Get your pen, your red pens ready. Answers. <laughs> right, so round one, question one. Uh, the popular city centre pub on the left of this picture was the Royal Exchange. And it's still the Royal Exchange today. The pub to the right, I think, is now the Slug and Lettuce. Quiet day there. Second question. This Worcester landmark, pictured in 1951, was um, at the race course, Pitchcroft. So either of those would be correct. Uh, and it's actually the Grandstand Hotel, which you can see on the front of the building there. Disappeared, I think, in the later 1960s to be replaced by the, the modern Grandstand. So this milk bar from, the, um, from 1951 was located in Bridge Street and there were many of them around the city centre. Next one. So there may be other other answers to this one. So if you have put something else, then we won't hold it against you. For mine and Tasha's generation, <laughs> this place was known as Zigzags or Picassos. Um, yeah. Had a couple of nights out there. <laughs> <laughs> so, 
So if you said either of those, you would be correct. Let us know if you know it by another name um, and we'd be interested to hear from you. You might need to move the screen. That way. Okay. Right, next one. So the fountain that uh, was originally located in the market hall um, made by the city ironworkers Hardy and Padmore uh, is now located in Cripplegate Park. And I'm sure many of you will know it. Next one. The former public baths at Sons and Walk were, of course, Parks Puddle. Lots of you refer to it as that. It's come through a bit slow. Um, I was just checking, but it's come up saying Tanya's as well, I believe. Tanya's. Tanya's. Ah, oh, Tanya's nightclub as well. Mm -hmm. Thank you. <laughs> um, you can have a point for that. <laughs> uh, the former public hall in the Corn Market uh, later being, became known as the Majestic. And it was actually demolished to make way for um, City Walls Road. Very sad. Uh, don't know whether any of you actually went to this school, but Hounds Lane School is the name of the school overlooking the river there. And JNF Halls on the Shambles was an ironmonger's shop. Um, bit of a sad loss, that building. And you may have noticed later on in the, um, the quiz questions, the, the building that replaced it um, is also pictured. So it was an ironmonger's. And the final question on round one, uh, what building stood on the site of Laslett's Arms Houses it was the city jail. Now, this may have caught you out because obviously we did have the county jail on Castle Street, um, which disappeared um, earlier in the 20th century. So there may have been some confusion over that. But the city jail stood on the site of Laslett's Arms Houses. And in fact, um, the arms houses were located inside the jail until it was rebuilt in the early 20th century. Fun fact. So it was the city jail. Right, on to round two. Uh, just before you end that one, we've also got Tanya's, yeah, with its Krypton gas laser. Whoa, <laughs> that's that sounds quite scary, actually. A Krypton <laughs> gas la laser, wow. Uh, and the last one before you move on, uh, mind your head, there's no ceiling. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, round two, the names and events round this one. So the first question, uh, what famous historical event is associated with Fort Royal Park? It was the Battle of Worcester. Second question, name two of the well-known musical acts that have performed at the Gaumont in Forgate Street. I have a list here and it's a pretty impressive list actually. There may be some missing, so please do let us know if we missed anyone um, that, that you went to see. So we have Jimi Hendrix, Buddy Holly, Roy Orbison, the Beatles, twice actually the Beatles, once as support act for Roy Orbison and then later when they'd become famous in their own right, uh, the Rolling Stones, Cat Stevens, Engelbert Humperdinck, David Bowie as Ziggy Stardust, and Mott the Hoople, who were a Herefordshire band, I believe, and they were actually supported by the relatively un unknown band Queen. So a real lineup of char characters that uh, performed in Worcester. Um, yeah, we'd love to hear from you, actually, if you went to see any of those. Um, and as I said, if there are any that aren't on that list, then do let us know. So you needed two of those to get your point. Next one, which famous comedian opened the Blackfriars Square development in May 1969? It was Ken Dodd, later to become Sir Ken Dodd. Uh, 
what was the name of the famous male impersonating music hall star born in Worcester and later performing on the stage at this theatre? It was Vesta Tilly. So she was a music hall star during World War I especially. Part of the recruitment drive uh, for soldiers, I believe. Vesta Tilly. Uh, three generations of the same family, Basil, Damien and Brett, who played for the County Cricket Club, were the Dolivera family. That looks like a nice day out, doesn't it? <laughs> uh, which King of England granted the royal warrant to Royal Worcester Porcelain? It was George III in 1788. In fact, he and his wife, Queen Charlotte, visited the factory uh, just before awarding the, uh, the royal warrant. And they're credited with saving the, the factory um, by commissioning uh, a new pattern of porcelain because it was struggling at that point. Um, what is the name of the 1908 Olympic uh, Games gold, me gold medalist? I'm, I'm messing this one up, aren't I? The gold medalist known as the Worcester Wonder, what was his name? It was Ernest Ernie Payne. No relation. I was going <laughs> to Yeah, it was just so tempting. I heard the tick, problem. tick, tick. Oh, yeah. That's a problem with sponsors. Do you want me to... Yes, yeah, yeah, go for it. So Catherine writes, wow, Jimi Hendrix and David Bowie, that's amazing. wonder if anyone can remember it or has memories to share. Yeah. Um, and then Caroline James responded saying, Rod Stewart and the Faces. Oh, oh excellent. So, One to add to the list. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, okay, so how did the King Charles pub in New Street get its name? It was the house that King Charles II escaped from after the Battle of Worcester. Okay. Nipped out the back door and out, the, out through the city wall. <laughs> yeah. um, what is the name of the famous Worcester son who is commemorated by a statue at the end of the high street? It is... Sir Edward Elgar. And that was a meeting place for us growing up as kids. Mm. The Elgar statue. And finally, which famous individual arrived at the Guildhall in 1951 to receive the freedom of the city? It was Winston Churchill, later to become Sir Winston Churchill. And that's the end of, the, of round two, the answers for round two. So hopefully everyone's got full marks. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Just very quickly, we've got a tech issue. Uh, the camera's focused more that way. It's on you. You might just need to shift it back a little bit. That that way? How's that? Mm. Hang on, just a moment. I can just check through. Uh, no. That's better. <laughs> Sorry, Tash. No, Tash has been hidden cool. away in the background there. Right. Oh, and then someone's just said, just before you go on to uh, uh, round number three for answers, yes, I saw Barry. He climbed round the side of the auditorium, which seemed very de daring and avant-garde at the time. Wow. With a, that is pretty cool. <laughs> that is cool. <laughs> yeah. oh, these are the sorts of memories. Yeah, yeah. yeah brilliant. Thank yeah, you. Thank you. <laughs> okay, on to round three then. Name that shop. So you get to see the, the images in full now because we've removed the blanks. So the first one was the milkmaid food stores. Again, there were a number of these around the city. Russell and Doral, of course, very famous uh, Worcester store. Next one, the Cadena Cafe. As we said earlier, a, a lot of people have talked about the Cadena Cafe or Cadena. I'm not quite sure how you say it. Um, and yeah, the, the smell of the coffee in there and things. Name the shoe shop, Elts Shoe Shop. I got measured for my first pair of school shoes at Elts and after that we always went to supermarket. <laughs> uh, next question. This one was the True Form Boot Company Limited. 
love this image with the lady eyeing up the shoes in the shop window there. Yeah. <laughs> she looks very elegant. Uh, Timothy White's and Taylor's. A few people have mentioned that one. Going back. And the next one, of course, F.W. Woolworth and Company Limited. Woolworths is another um, loss from the high street, of course. And just to the right of that photo, I believe, is um, they're actually building uh, the Marks and Spencers, the new Marks and Spencers, or well, the new Marks and Spencers in the 1960s. Uh, Spark and Company. A few people have memories of going in there into, I think there were music booths in there. So you could go in and listen to music. Next one. H. Samuels on the site of um, J and F Halls, the Ironmongers. Yeah, it doesn't doesn't sit well, does it? <laughs> so H. Samuels, the um, jewellers. And finally, Marks and Spencer. I did have a smile about that one. <laughs> Hopefully that was a nice easy one for everyone. Right, so tot up your scores. Do let us know how you've got on with those. Hopefully there are a few people with 30 out of 30, do we think? Maybe. Possibly. No one's coming forth just yet, but I'll keep an eye. Yeah, let us know how you've got, got on with those. Uh, and if there are any that you dispute, you're welcome to, to let us know. But um, we may not agree with you. But <laughs> um, right, Tash, we're getting towards um, the end of the day now. We are. Do you want to pull up our, our thank you? Yeah. So, so obviously, just slightly um, ahead of schedule, and we will look. But um, Sheena and I really just wanted to say thank you um, for today for, for joining with us you you probably heard us at the beginning be um, a bit unsure with the tech issues and how it would go um, but it's just been an amazing opportunity to start talking about the project and getting it out there and, and most importantly for us as we said right at the very beginning um, oh there's some schools coming through so I'll have to oh. <laughs> comment on those before before we end but um, we really do want to say thank you to, to everyone um, for coming today and just the sense that we've had um, of people just wanting to join us on the project really and, and, and all the great feedback that you've given us. So mm, we're, we're going brilliant. to continue to do regular updates. Um, we've said through all those sorts of um, social media platforms, so look out, Twitter, Facebook, um, you'll see updates that will come through our partners. So Worcestershire Association of Carers, a number of episodes that will be sending out as well. So thank you again. And then finally. Oh, sorry. That's OK. Um. We, um, we really wanted to, and I know we have throughout the, um, the last few hours, wanted to say thank you and to acknowledge everyone that's on our journey with us because without everyone we wouldn't be here today so thank you very much from Sheena and I and thank you for continuing to support us and really really look forward to um, the next couple of years yep yeah um, and we'll be in touch we will be in touch <laughs> the the reason I was umming is people have come back and, and we have to answer that Sheen we've got Oh no, 10, but I only moved to Worcester a couple of years ago. I think that's a fairly decent number. Well, that's not bad yeah. at all, no. I think um, 25. Ooh, Very good. Well done, Caroline James. Um, let me just go back up. There's been a few people that have bounced that. So we've got an 18 from Marie, or, or Mary, sorry. Yeah. Uh, 16 out of 30 for the second round was, was the best for Catherine. Yeah. A 10. People have said thank you very much and well done, ladies. Most enjoyable. So thank, thank you. you. Right, right back at you. And all we've got to say is we'll we'll be in touch and goodbye. Yeah. Thanks everyone. See you again soon. Bye.